Marsha contacts cheaters to piece together all the facts. Marsha Johnson, age 24, a telephone operator worried that her boyfriend takes advantage of her trusting nature. Recently, in the last two months, we haven't spent not even 50% of the time together that we would have spent three months ago. Um, he has his, he, tell, he tells me that he's devoting his time to his business, which he's trying to get off the ground, which is, com I completely understand that. Um, but in the wee hours of the night, I don't feel like those business you know, the, the, I don't feel like, I don't feel like that you're conducting business at specific hours, you know, one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning. I don't think those are business hours. Curtis wants a newfound relationship, which I as well want. He wants us to put our past behind us and to move forward into our future and to work, you know, on making things right for the future and not bringing up any past transgressions or things like that. So. I have a problem with that when your phone rings at midnight and you answer it and then you hang it up and then I'm laying on your chest and your heart is beating so fast that your, your heart is about to jump out of your chest and knock me off. Another reason why his behavior is suspicious to me is because whenever we're in each other's presence, he takes out his negative energy, whatever frustrations that he's had throughout that day, throughout the course of the day, whether it be 10 hours before we see each other or five, whatever bad has ha that has happened, he wants to let me know that it's happened and let me know that he's frustrated about it. Not letting me know in a, hey, can you listen to my problems? Letting me know in a, hey, this is going on and you're gonna have to hear me vent about it type way. The main problem is now that, okay, you want to put the past behind us, but we can't do that if you're bringing the past things, same situations that we had in the past into our future. It won't be successful. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Curtis Jackson, age 23, a business owner bending the truth when discussing his work activities. Investigation day three. Cheaters Ombudsman initiate the inquiry by dispatching field agents to a local bazaar where the suspect rents space for his burgeoning retail business. After quite some time, cheater surveillance teams spot suspect Curtis Jackson exiting the front door of the building, but he's not alone. Casually strolling through the parking lot, suspect Jackson carries on a conversation with an unidentified woman. The two advance to the unknown woman's vehicle and hop inside. As the minutes pass, Cheater's investigators realize that these two have no intention of leaving the premises. Fearful of moving in closer and giving away their positions, Cheater's PIs can only speculate on what may be occurring inside the car. A short time later, suspect Jackson gets out of the woman's car and heads for the store's entrance. But before he can get inside, his companion requests his return to the vehicle, to which he happily obliges. Suspect Jackson remains in the company of the unknown female for quite a while before the two finally go their separate ways. Investigation Day 6. Cheater's operatives advance to suspect Jackson's workplace after several days of inactivity. Confident that the last has not been seen of suspect Jackson's female friend, Cheater's detectives target a familiar-looking vehicle stopping in a desolate section of the parking lot. Suspect Jackson's companion, whose identity is withheld, steps out of her car and slowly walks to the front entrance of the flea market. Companion disappears inside for a long time. When companion reemerges with suspect Jackson at her side, the two make their way over to her vehicle. Companion appears quite receptive to suspect Jackson's advances, allowing him to grope her under the bright lights of the public parking lot. Not caring who may witness their deviance, the impassioned couple continues to make out for several minutes before an acquaintance of suspect Jackson breaks up their romantic interlude. Suspect Jackson chats with the occupant of the white truck for several minutes before sending him on his way. The two lovebirds immediately head over to the other side of the car to carry on their heated discussion. After a lengthy makeout session, companion 
departs and suspect Jackson returns to work. Investigation day 10. Cheaters PIs are once again stationed outside of suspect Jackson's workplace in anticipation of another visit from his sweetheart. Companion does arrive and enters the building for a few minutes before reappearing with suspect Jackson in tow. Hand in hand, the two lovers walk a familiar path over to her vehicle. Without batting an eye, companion pins suspect Jackson against her car. Suspect Jackson evidently believes that his silver tongue can fool anyone, as demonstrated in this recorded phone call with girlfriend Marsha. Hello? What you doing? Cheaters operatives close the case and finalize their report for Marsha. After the break, the confrontation. Having collected the undisputable confirmation, Cheaters catches up with Marsha to disclose the footage. Coming to terms with her suspicions, Marsha attempts to manage her rattled emotions. Marsha, thanks for being here tonight. I know that this is kind of a short notice situation where we had you come out and we do appreciate your attention. Our detectives do have some information that they thought it was important for you to see. Are you ready to take a look at that now? Okay, Marsha, on this day in the investigation, Curtis was observed leaving with a young lady. They walked out to her car. They both get into her car. Now, she was carrying some products, so I think she might have made a purchase at his shop. And at this point, it just seems they're having a conversation. Curtis does get out to leave. As he walks away, this young lady pops out of the car, calls him back. He gets back in the car, and then they sit down and have another conversation. I really can't see what's going on inside there. On this day, Marsha, we again observe the same young woman visits Curtis at his place of business. They exit again holding hands, and you can see their behavior. They spend some time necking, and I know this is particularly distasteful. continue to spend time in the parking lot when their business is through. She gets in her car and he goes back to work. I know you had your suspicions, right. but when you see Curtis actually going through with his infidelity and, and deceit, what goes through your mind, Marshall? Mixed, I have mixed emotions. Mainly, I'm hurt. That's my main emotion right now. My feelings are hurt. The main thing you'd like to find out right now is, Curtis, what are your plans and what are your intentions? Exactly, because it, I need some closure, really. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and give the detective a call right now. Gomez, what's it look like? She showed up again at his job. Okay, we're on our way. All right. They're at Curtis's business. Mm -hmm. Keep on. Hey, here's Gomez. Gomez. Okay, Behind they're walking out. It. Is that them? They just passed the bizarre sign. That's them, all right. Let's pull out, make a right and a left into this parking lot. As soon as we get into that parking lot, cut our headlights. Moving now, moving now. And I am. Headlights are off. 
car. It's over there. You see? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I'm All getting right. a little bit Hey, excited. guys, move fast when we get close. They've got a car pulling up on the other side of them. All right, I'm out. This is this chick I just met. Get out the car. I knew it was set up from the start. Hey, you better get that camera out of my face. What you doing, Charlie? What, what you doing? All right, we ain't finna make no sense. What are you doing? Is, is this getting your business off the ground? Nah, this I had trash. That hit me. I... Don't you have time no, trash? No, that's what you look, what you look like. like. What I just want to find out is what he's been telling you. Man, I've been talking to him about three, three weeks now, whatever. Mm -hmm. He was telling me that he wanted to, uh, wanted to talk, whatever. They was finna break up or whatever, so that's mm -hmm. what that was, and I ain't got nothing to say to me. Just come out of my face. Okay. How long you been talking to her? What? Man, what? Third, this is the third, fourth time I've ever spoke to him. Came in the shop, charged me up one day, pulled me outside. Let me holler at you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you just... And, I, you know, I was just being cordial at first, then, you know, I'm talking about it was just a whole rush thing. What are your intentions now with My her? intentions? Are you serious about Are you serious out. about her? Yes. Number one. Number one, it's going to be a lot I of really trifling don't appreciate females. You doing this. Okay, well, you think I appreciate you in this call with her? We can handle this one of two ways. One, you can accept my apology. Or two, you can just be over. Fine. And you can go your separate way and I can I'm go gone. my way. I'm gone. Well, holla, baby. Ask me, am I going to lose a wink of sleep? Yeah, film that. I ain't finna miss a damn heartbeat. And you keep you talking. Talk that? So keep talking what? I'm gonna need security to protect me here. I'm gonna need security. Oh, come on, Marsha. I'm gonna need Marcia. security. What? What you I'm say? Gonna, oh, you ain't gonna lose a wink of sleep. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna lose a wink of sleep. You ain't gonna lose a wink of sleep. You ain't gonna lose a wink of sleep. You gonna lose a wink of sleep. You think you gonna clown me? No, you the one doing the clown, and you no, in the car. No, 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 no. You in the car, get some. You in the car, get some. No, see this is what you're doing. You in the car, get some. This hoe. But I'm clowning you. But you in the car, get some. This hoe. That's what you said three days ago. Let me see it go. Oh man, damn, why y'all let him do me like that, man? Marsha, no, no, that's not the answer. This wasn't the way to handle the situation. Okay, was that the way to handle the situation? Jumping in the car with the first. Threw herself at you? I mean, I did make that mistake. Okay, Kurt, if the shoe were on the other foot, Curtis, I feel and that bad. was her with somebody else, can would, you see I your would point? I really feel bad. Yeah, I would really feel okay. bad. Okay, really so you bad. should understand how she feels. I don't take the relationship for granted. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's been real stressful, but we're undead with good times and we're undead with bad times. You know, we have had more, I, I believe we had more good times than bad times. Mm -hmm. But it's certain things that I'm just not going to accept. And okay, but, she, she but do you see this. how that sounds funny? She knows this. Because I'm, she hasn't been the one going around behind your back. I know. So whether or not who's going to accept what behavior, I think is kind of a moot point right now. Yeah. Talk to you. Okay. Talk to you later. I know it doesn't feel like you've accomplished very much tonight, but you did something for yourself, and you did something that was positive, because you took some control of your own situation, and that takes a very strong person to do. Following the confrontation, Marsha remains shocked about Curtis's infidelity. Stay tuned as Cheaters reveals Marsha's plans for the weeks to come. 
But next, Cheaters introduces Brenda West. Brenda recalls the embarrassment she endured at the hands of her lover's girlfriend. Brenda West, age 29. Brenda speaks out on the events surrounding the confrontation in which she was caught in the middle. When I first saw the cameras uh, coming into the bar, uh, I didn't know exactly what was going on. Uh, I thought maybe somebody, you know, was doing something I really didn't know. Um, I was just trying to celebrate my birthday. <laughs> um, and then when they came around the corner and started focusing on me, <laughs> of all people, um, I really kind of got very curious. Um, and then they went to Chris. Um, so I really wanted to know what was going on then. <laughs> Decided she was going to shove my cake towards me, and uh, it made me a little mad. So yeah, I picked it up and I threw it at her. Um, didn't really mean to get it all over Joey's coat, but you know, sorry. <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but I'm sure it wasn't too funny then. After we got married and I thought life was just going to be great and we were going to be so happy and live happily ever after like he had promised, um, things are um, seem to be coming to an end uh, in, in my own marriage. Um, due to his own infidelities, uh, I think uh, cheaters might have to come back into my life once again and see if they can't do a little bit of uh, following up on him once again. Marsha Johnson acknowledges that her eyes may be open, but her confusion on how to proceed remains. On one hand, Marsha still very much loves Curtis, but on the other, she knows that he will continue to cause her misery if the relationship continues. Marsha says that her future with Mr. Jackson remains in limbo until she has the ability to take the necessary time to fully assess the situation. Curtis Jackson confesses that his behavior needs improvement but has confidence that Marsha will forgive his thoughtless actions. Mr. Jackson does admit to his difficulty in refusing the advances of other women. Nonetheless, he believes that Marsha hired Ms. Berlitz to test his limits, which to him crosses the line of ethics and human dignity. As for her involvement, his companion denies Mr. Jackson's accusation of deceit, stating that she was simply attracted to Mr. Jackson from the moment she saw him. His companion displayed little remorse for her part in undermining a committed relationship. In the midst of entertaining a marriage proposal, Oscar approaches cheaters to help quell his anxiety. Oscar Kopechny, age 32, an art director having trouble interpreting the writing on the wall. She definitely has been overly emotional sometimes with me, where she will just come in and, you know, like hug me really tight and, you know, just, just cry on my shoulder and, and do really weird things and, and make me feel like, you know, is, am I doing something wrong or is she doing something wrong? She's, she's definitely overcompensating in the level where I don't know what to make of it. I, just, I can't put my finger on it. There's, there's nothing. It's just, she just seems so different to me at this point than, than it has been. And, and even with my with my job and everything, that was never an issue. And now it just seems like it is an issue and it never was before. And I just feel like, you know, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, you know? And, and so I don't think it's me even. I think it's something else, someone else. She leaves the house a lot, especially when I'm home. Whatever little time I'm home, she leaves unexpectedly. She gets weird phone calls that she she won't carry phone conversations in front of me and i that 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 bothers me that makes me think that there's something going on for her to leave 
oh, I'm going to the store. I'm going to go grab a carton of milk. This and that. I mean, it was never like that before. I'm afraid I'll lose her if I confront her in, uh, in that manner, if, if I don't know anything. I mean, I've asked her about her behavior, but I haven't asked her where she's going or what she's doing or whom she's seeing because, you know, what if I'm wrong? I, I don't know. If, if I'm wrong, then why am I going to risk my relationship? But deep down inside, this is, you know, this is why I came here because I, I really needed to know. And, you know, I've even showed up at her job from time to time and she's been there and, it, and it's okay. I do have forgiveness in my heart because I love her so much that I would do anything for her. And ultimately, I don't want to lose her. I just don't want to make a mistake with everything, with our future. If she's not happy, so be it. Let her go somewhere else. And then I can continue on with my life, but I don't want to lose her. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Carrie Clausen, age 28, a nanny nurturing her passion for a forbidden lover. Investigation day four. Cheaters detectives observed the suspect for several days in an attempt to uncover any unusual activities that could lend credence to Oscar's concerns. Finishing with her daily responsibilities at the household where she works, Suspect Clausen journeys to a nondescript intersection. Suspect Clausen waits on the corner for some time and appears to be getting impatient until an unknown female rushes out of the darkness and surprises her. The two snuggle and head across the street to an ice cream parlor where they indulge in some tasty treats. Suspect Clausen seems unimpressed with her female friend's selection and expresses her disapproval with a kiss. Satisfied, Suspect Clausen leads her companion to another establishment where they can share some stronger refreshment. Warming up to each other at the bar, Suspect Clausen decides to move the fun to a more personal location. Hours pass and things continue to heat up. The impassioned couple vacates the pub and hurries to an unknown apartment several blocks away. Without the slightest bit of hesitation, Suspect Clausen disappears inside where she remains secluded before finally heading home later in the evening. Investigation Day 7. With nothing new to report for the past several days, Suspect Clausen departs the residence she shares with Oscar. Cheater's agents follow close behind for several blocks, unsure of Suspect Clausen's destination. She arrives at a street-side cafe, where the female from the previous day, now identified as Linda Merrick, enthusiastically greets her. With a warm embrace, the two settle down for coffee and some friendly conversation. Seemingly high-spirited, Suspect Clausen and companion Merrick set out on a long walk. Eventually, the two ladies settle in a secluded spot by the river. Suspect Clausen lingers with companion Merrick for a while before the pair heads back to the bustling city. Making their way to a movie theater, the companions disappear inside. Cheater's agents wait nearby and then trail Suspect Clausen and companion Merrick down the street to a subway terminal. Hugging each other tightly, companion Merrick departs underground and suspect Clausen returns home to fill Oscar with more lies. Investigation Day 8. Cheaters detectives tail suspect Clausen as she heads off after work. Hopping on the subway, suspect Clausen travels to the heart of the city where companion Merrick greets her. Companion Merrick takes suspect Clausen's hand and the girls stroll the busy central streets. Working up a thirst, Suspect Clausen and her newfound friends stop off at a bar. Companion Merrick orders a round of drinks and the loving pair cozy up for some intimate communication. Ready to continue their evening elsewhere, Companion Merrick sends Suspect Clausen into a bakery while she sneaks into the market to buy Suspect Clausen a gift. Suspect Clausen appears too busy to tell the truth, as shown in this recorded phone conversation with Oscar. Just 
Now certain of Carrie's unfaithful disposition, Cheater's agents rush to counsel Oscar on his marriage proposal. Coming up, the confrontation. With confirmation of Clausen's exploits well documented, cheaters must deliver the evidence to Oscar. Faced with the unwelcome findings, Oscar braces for the potential impact. Oscar, thanks for being here tonight. I know that when you contacted our show initially, you had some concerns about what was going on in your relationship. Oscar, our detectives do have the information that he asked us to gather. There's a potential that this might be, be painful and might contain some information that, that would hurt you. And I just want you to be aware of that. You see that, okay? Mm -hmm. On this particular day, Carrie is waiting. A young lady sneaks up behind her. At this point, uh, they go to an ice cream shop. Just, just, just turn it off. She's never even mentioned that she likes girls. She's, this is, this is, this is insane. Has she ever talked about her, her past? No, I mean, she's talked about a couple boyfriends, but never this. This is, this is, ins I mean, I, never, never, never. This, oh my God, no way. It's like a whole different person. And at the close of that particular day, she does go back to the apartment of this other young lady. She does go in and spends quite some time there before we are able to see her leaving. On this particular day, Oscar, our detective followed Carrie. She's met on the street by this young lady. They stroll down the street, holding hands, stop in at another bar where our detective was able to observe them through the window. Again, being close and intimate. And as they're walking, this young lady sends Carrie into a store to make a purchase. She ducks into a flower shop that's close by, makes a purchase, gives her a gift. And again, there's another embrace. She hasn't you. hugged me like that in months. And then just to see this, like, here, it's just it's breaking my heart. No. And they take a cab no, to a no, hotel. No, no, no. I don't know if they were no. just in the hotel bar. No. I never, I never wanted this. <sighs> Give him a second. Better, 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 better. Now I know, I know, I know. Where did she tell you she was gonna be this evening? She told me she was working tonight. And she thinks you're at work? Oh, yeah, yeah. She's with this young lady again. And I know that's not what you want to hear. Let me contact our detective. Yeah, we just finished the client briefing. What do you have on your side? They're at a park, not too far from here. Okay. All right, we're on our way. We're gonna start going there now. You ready? Come on. Yeah, what do you have? All right, go head up. You got a visual? Okay. Look for us, flag us down, because we're right, we're at the checkpoint. Come out on this side, Oscar. All right. Right around the first one on, on the right. Carrie, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Can you explain to Oscar what you're doing? I'm hanging out with my friend. Okay. You're now with your friend? I saw the I saw the video. Don't your friend. What do you mean what your are you friend? What are you talking about? I saw video. what happened on the video. Where are all these people? They've been watching you for days. Days. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, what? Yes. Yeah, I saw it all. Coming up, the conclusion. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, what? Yes! Yeah, I saw it all. Well, why did you bring all these people in this? Yeah, it's a TV show. It's called... What the hell? Cheaters. Talk to me. No, talk to me. Why you want me to talk to you about you cheating on me I'm not cheating on you. I saw the friend. I saw you kissing her. If you were there, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. You're doing this in front of all these people. How long have you been seeing Carrie? I don't have to tell you anything. What? I mean, what? What? Please, this is what? so embarrassing. I can't believe you're doing this right now. Well, how do you think I feel? Okay, can we like walk Nothing away? Nothing happened. Huh? We need to like have this whole. No, why don't you walk why away? You, you walk, walk away. away. Why I don't know. Your you... business. Why you... My business is. I, I wanna... Excuse me. My my own business. I saw you, nasty. Uh, yeah, well, hold All on. right. Like, why can't you talk like a human being? You got to bring this whole. Because this is how I had to find out. Find this out is how what? I had to find out. Find out you stay away. You get away from me. I don't no, know you. Get away I don't want to know you. Your little friends away. From I don't want to know who the hell you are. What? Where the? You're disgusting. Both of you. I can't. I can't do this right now. I can't believe you're doing this. Oscar, come here. Why can't Oscar? Let's just go home. Seriously, please. Can we just go home and talk about this? Excuse me. Do you have nothing better to do? Yeah, but what the hell was that about with her? She's nothing. She's a friend. She's a That's friend? I saw the video. No. You were kissing She's her. She's just a friend, okay? You were okay? kissing her. Can you explain that to me? I, no, Why I you were kissing I her? Explain. Oh, you no, can't I explain it? I want to keep you. Okay, sweetie. What do you think I've been doing? I met her, I saw, you know, we hung out a few times, I... Things started happening, I mean, nothing... Nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing like that, but... All know? these years I've been at work, I meet models, I meet everybody, and what, I haven't done anything, anything, not once, to betray you, and look at you, you're betraying me right nothing now. Nothing happened, I swear to God, I'm not, I'm not gay, I'm not gay, oh. I, I love you. Well, the video says different. Nothing happened with her. I mean, it was feelings, it was emotion, it was stuff that I hadn't felt with you because I never see you. She made you feel good in ways that were missing in your relationship yeah. with Oscar. All right. Do you want this relationship to continue? With more Oscar? than anything. Oh, more than anything. Okay. I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't. I do love you. I love you too. After the confrontation, Oscar decides to reevaluate his plans for marriage. At the end of the show, Cheaters reports on how Oscar decides to proceed. But first, meet Vanessa Airy. Vanessa describes the devastation she endured at the hands of her two-timing former employer. Vanessa Airy, age 23. Vanessa details the events of a rude awakening she received courtesy of the Cheaters crew. When I saw the cameras, I wasn't sure what to think at first. And then when, um, I guess her name's Kimberly, came and ran up and pushed him, that's when I realized, I was like, there's something really wrong going on. And I started looking around and I, I of course realized, I was like, we're on cheaters. Oh my gosh, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. What the hell are you doing? Lewis, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. What the hell are you doing? What? Get away! His girlfriend, we've been together I for a year and a half. Wait, 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 hold on. We're about to, we're supposed Whoa, to be moving what? in together, oh, Lewis. Look, look. You are such a, ugh. I really, really cared about him and, and I would have done anything for him at that time. And so when all that happened, it hurt me on the deepest level. <laughs> and I just wish that I could have gone back and I could have not jumped in in the way and just let her have him and seeing what would happen. Look, we'll take her. Do you need a ride home? No, I want to see your girlfriend. No, I want to see your Easy, easy. Walter. You are Look, such I don't, I don't an you. ass. Just, oh, you know. Just, I don't need to talk to you. Where's my purse? Where's my purse? Where's her purse? Who took her purse? Oh, we've got it. We've got it. Go. 
you give me my purse. purse. I just have to go. I learned a lot from, from that experience. I learned to not put myself out there as much. I also, I also learned to not be part of that lifestyle and to, you know, be careful who you surround yourself with because they are, they're representations of you. And if they're doing wrong, you could get caught up in it. And that's not good. Oscar Kopechny says that for the time being, an engagement to carry is out of the question. However, professing his continued love for Ms. Clausen, Oscar states that he has no choice but to give her another chance. Oscar acknowledges that it will be difficult to forgive Ms. Clausen, but he feels confident that their feelings for one another are strong enough to guide them through this uncertain time. Carrie Clausen is unable to express the deep level of regret she experiences on betraying the man she loves. Ms. Clausen admits to becoming aware of Oscar's intention to propose to her, which in turn caused her to panic. Ms. Clausen claims the confrontation has jolted her out of denial, and she is now determined to prove her commitment to Oscar. Linda Merrick suffers deeply from Carrie's reversal and says that there was something very special between her and Ms. Clausen. Having become emotionally attached, Ms. Merrick chooses not to let go of Ms. Clausen so easily and warns, I'll be one of behavior. Sarita seeks out cheaters for professional assistance. Sarita Bronwyn, age 26. A hairstylist worried that her boyfriend is throwing aside their relationship. I was in a car wreck and um, it was storming that night and I ran into a diner and he was about to get off of work and he stood there and he let me use his cell phone and um, and he, he waited there with me all day. He kept me laughing. The sense of humor he has is, I love that about him. That was, I knew he was the one right, right from then. From day one, Devin told me he had a son. And he told me that was his heart and joy, his son. And I accepted that. I accepted that. And just like Devin, I love this child also. He's. He's like a son of my own, like I had him myself. I love this child. These past couple of months, it's been, I have, I don't see him as much as I do. He don't call like he, use, like he usually do. And when he do call, the conver our conversations, it, it don't even be a conversation. It be yes, no, and we don't even, we don't talk like we used to talk. That he don't love me like he used to, or that anything, I mean, anything, he, he'll be like, when he have like an attitude or something, just get an attitude for nothing, and he, when he just get up and like ignore me or just leave, that, that hurts me. Cause me not knowing what's wrong or what's going on, and it makes it feel like it's always me. I love Devin, I always will, but I can't be with someone who, who's cheating and all that, all that type of, I mean, lying and stuff. I can't do that. I can't see myself doing it. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Devon Stoy, age 28, a cook reevaluating his current commitments. Investigation day four. Cheaters detectives assemble to review the facts in the case prior to launching the current investigation. With ongoing surveillance at the suspect's residence, cheaters agents spot an unknown vehicle approaching the scene. Moments later, the unidentified female driver of the vehicle emerges from around the corner with a small child in tow. The unknown woman and child are accompanied by the focus of the inquiry, suspect Devin Stoy. The threesome enters the unknown woman's vehicle and departs. After a brief pursuit, Cheater's operatives follow suspect Stoy and company into a shopping mall where they browse for some time. After purchasing the youngster some candy, suspect Stoy leads the group back to the unidentified woman's vehicle. Cheater's investigators follow them a short distance to a video game arcade. 
Once inside, Suspect Stoy generously offers to pay for the evening's entertainment. Ending a long night together, Suspect Stoy and his guests decide to leave the establishment, and Cheater's P.I.s track the group back to Suspect Stoy's apartment. Topping off a perfect evening together, Suspect Stoy and his companion kiss for several minutes before going their separate ways. Investigation Day 7. Cheater's field agents receive a tip from headquarters, anticipating probable movement at Suspect Stoy's residence. A short time later, Cheater's PIs observe the same white vehicle from days earlier approaching the complex. Suspect Stoy's companion has now been identified as Latrice Weller, an ex-girlfriend and the mother of Suspect Stoy's young child. With arms around each other, the couple advance to Companion Weller's vehicle and depart. Ready to capture more surveillance footage, Cheater's investigators follow Suspect Stoy and Companion Weller to a restaurant and bar. With a swing in their step, Suspect Stoy and his date proceed inside for dinner and drinks. Sometime later, the duo returns to the parking lot, but do not leave immediately. Suspect Stoy initiates a long kiss before the two move on to their next destination. Cheater's operatives drop back to avoid detection as Suspect Stoy and Companion Weller approach a movie theater. The couple disappears inside and remain unobserved for several hours. Suspect Stoy and Companion Weller finally re-emerge arm in arm and once again stop at the car to make out. After returning to Suspect Stoy's apartment, Cheater's agents can only watch as the lovers head inside for the night. Investigation Day 11. With Cheater's crews gathered outside Suspect Stoy's apartment, Companion Weller once again makes her presence known as she walks directly to Suspect Stoy's door. A long time passes before Companion Weller comes out from the domicile with Suspect Stoy, and the couple departs. With their hands locked together, Suspect Stoy and his girlfriend casually stroll into a restaurant. Suspect Stoy is caught twisting the truth in this recorded phone call with Sarita. Cheaters completes the investigation and summons all field agents back to command center to prepare a report for Sarita. After the break, the confrontation. With the footage verifying Devin's dishonesty, Cheaters approaches Sarita to inform her of the unfortunate results. Hesitant to move forward, Sarita stands by to find out the truth concerning her boyfriend's inconsistent behavior. Rita, thanks for being here this evening. I know the situation and the circumstances that led you to contact us have been very stressful for you, and we want you to know that we appreciate your time and attention. Rita, the reason that we're standing here this evening, our detectives have compiled some of the information that you asked us to gather for you. Are you ready to look at that? Yes. Okay. You've probably run through this scenario a million times in your mind over the last couple of weeks, haven't you? Yes. As the investigation starts, our detectives observe a car arriving at Devin's apartment. A woman gets out and she has a young child with her. Do you recognize either of the two of them? No, that's Devin's son. I know, I know who that is, but okay. I don't know who she is. Okay. They get into the car. She's driving. The detective followed them to an arcade. This woman is very comfortable with Devin's son. He's sitting in her lap as they play a game, as they play the arcades. After spending quite some time there, they go back to the apartment. Okay. And... It hurts my heart mm -hmm. to see that. Knowing I didn't gave my all, I would do anything and everything for him. And he, no, I don't think so. I'm not, fin no. On this day, Rita, the same young lady goes to Devin's apartment. She goes in. 
retrieves him. And it's clear that this is not a new relationship because they're comfortable with one another. You could just see their body language. As she leaves to go home, they share another embrace at the car and you could see that he's not fully clothed. Now, Rita, I know that that's not what you were hoping to, to learn. I didn't want it to be this way, but this is the way it is, and it hurts me. It's hurt. It, it just hurt. One of the reasons that we do have you here tonight, Rita, is because we can offer you an opportunity to confront Devin in the presence of this other woman. Would you like that? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna call the detective right now. Are you gonna be all right? Yes, I'm gonna be all right. We just finished up the second interview. Lay it out for me. They're on a club over on the east side of town. Okay. Yeah, we'll get going right now. Okay. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Okay, come right this way. Excuse me, there's a detective now. Yeah. Okay, there's a patio. So we'll be able to pull right up to them because they're outdoors. They're outside on the patio. All right, gotcha. Out. Yeah, we're coming across now. We're coming across now. All right, hang on. We're looking for a blue shirt with a headband. He's and she's got something lime green on. All right. Clear path. Keep going. On the right. He's on the right. Okay, there he is. Blue headband. Blue headband. Come on, Rita. Come on, Rita. Now's your time. Devin, I'm Joey Devin, Grekowicz. Who is this, man? Who is this, man? What's really going on with you, man? What's up these cameras up here? Matt, is that what you got going on with her, man? What do you got going on with her? Who is this? Who is she, man? No, partner. Let me know something. I'm right here. I'm right here. You won't tell. You gotta tell me something. Tell me something. Tell me something. What's really going? Nah, nah. What's really? Nah, we can talk about this now. We can talk about this now. Right now. Well, we going together. We going together. Oh well, you should have thought about that. Coming up, the conclusion. This is my baby mom, and this is who I'm going to be with. All right. You know what I'm saying? She's been gone, and this, you All know. Right. Okay. Me and Rita have been kicking kept, it, but, you know. What kept you from letting her know that? Was there a reason? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Cause you, cause you're I, didn't playing. Know, I didn't know for sure if I was going to get back my baby mom or not. So she was you a know, safety valve. I'm not, I'm not questioning I mean, she that. left you once, what make you think she ain't gonna do it again? I ain't, I ain't going no mother. I'm, I'm not even talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. But I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to you. But I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to you. But I ain't talking to you. What make you think he ain't finna, he ain't gonna do you like he did me? Oh, no. This, huh? this is stable. This home. I'm home. I'm home. We already home. got this. We home. We home. Did you know that he was seeing somebody? No. Okay, so this is a surprise to yeah, you too. Yeah, this is a shock to me. Okay. Who did you, know you, know you didn't okay, got to talk know. to this dude? Well, you, you talking know, to him she for? She can do whatever she wants, Devin. You need to, you need to, let, you need to say something. You need to say something. Let them, let them know, so they can go on about their mother. Please. Look, I'm going home. Tree. That's, that's what just, you want. That's, that's, that's the way you feel. That's what you no, want. No, it's not what I feel, but that's what's got to happen. You know what I'm saying? We got to, this is my family here. You know what I'm saying? Do you think so she what wouldn't about have respected me? that? Look how she acted. Because you she knew that she wasn't the truth me? from you, Devin. You don't know All you had to do was tell me. All you had to do was tell me. Yeah, you made it like this. This is good. You didn't even have to call these people like this, man. You didn't have to do what you did. What would have happened if she didn't call us, Devin? How long would it have taken you before you told her the truth? Right. Is that, is that unfair? Man, Just let me ask this. Let me ask this. Is it unfair for her to expect the truth it's from you? It's unfair. No, is but it? I didn't know, I didn't know me and my girl. I didn't know me and she was going to get back together or not, though. 
you can't think that that's the best option that you have. The best option, but I don't want no. I don't want all this. Look at all these people's out here like this, man. Look oh nobody. Oh nobody wants this. No. Nah, nobody nah. does. But you, nah. you could have stopped this a long you time ago. Anyway. You could have stopped this a long time ago. It's not, just by being. Don't act like you care because you don't. You care. didn't care, but you don't care about me and my feelings. We, we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about this later on. You sure all right? If you ain't got time for me now, you ain't got time for me never. Did you a favor because if it didn't happen now, do you think it wouldn't have happened down in the future? Yeah. You're right. After the confrontation, Sarita attempts to learn from her painful experience. Coming up shortly, Cheaters reports on her positive outlook on the future. But first, Cheaters presents Dave Hauser. Dave returns to discuss how his view on relationships has been altered by his traumatic experience on Cheaters. Dave Hauser, age 31. Dave returns to discuss how his temper got the better of him on the night he confronted his cheating girlfriend on Cheaters. Um, I, I would say it was definitely wasn't normal for me to overreact, but given the situation, all the adrenaline, the anxiety, and then um, for it to culminate with her in a car uh, with some skater guy with her pants down um, kind of precipitated me flying off the handle. Yeah. Who's that? That's him. Amanda? Yeah, yes. Guys, let her get her. Let me get your clothes on. Get your clothes. What the what are you doing? Actually, I, I do think Steve knew about me. I mean, I think he would have had to, given um, given the fact that that they were hanging out in my apartment, um, pretty much taking advantage of me being out of town. I think there would be pretty much no way that he would not know about me, um, which is, you know, which again kind of adds to to the fact that um, it takes a lot of disrespect to do that to somebody. You in there, man? In there? Come on, dude, come out. Oh, great. Leave him alone. If someone is going to, to use you to that degree, there's almost no point in reconciling. I feel like, you know, if I would have just kept going back out with her, it would have just happened again with somebody else. And then this, you know, this next time I might not have been in a position to, to hire cheaters to, um, to, to basically find out what was going on. Sarita Bronwyn affirms that her emotions are in such an upheaval that it has caused her to miss many days of work. She blames Mr. Stoy for all the undue pain and cautions anyone who may come in contact with him. Although she is weary of men at the present time, Sarita has started to date again and hopes to avoid anyone who possesses Devon's traits. Devon Stoy continues to deny his culpability in the case and suggests that Sarita should move on with her life. He adamantly contradicts Sarita's claim that the relationship was of an exclusive nature. Lastly, Mr. Stoy pleads with Cheetah's producers to please leave his family in peace. Like Sarita, Latrice Weller was just as upset to discover that Mr. Stoy was involved with another woman. She says that Devin is on thin ice at the moment and affirms her disapproval of his actions. She will, however, allow him another chance at Gabe calls on Cheaters to dispel his doubts. Gabe Teague, age 22. 
A student worried that his girlfriend's promise of loyalty is nothing more than an exaggeration of the truth. It was about a year ago, um, I had the opportunity to go down to a church camp here in Texas. I live up north. And I came down here, um, was just participating in the camp, didn't really expect much from it. And I was going to go ahead and cross a rope bridge at one of the obstacle courses they had to set up as a demonstration and I bumped into Casey and it seemed like we were having a mutual agreement on our lives. It seemed like we were both moving in the same direction, had the same hopes, the same desires. We kept a long distance relationship and just mainly discussing things over the phone. Um, we decided that I'd go ahead and move down here for school and when I did things seemed to change. Uh, feelings kind of came a little bit different. She didn't react the same around me. It seemed like the feeling I had when we first fell in love was gone. Well, she's a lot more confrontational now. She challenges, him, challenges me and avoids questions. Very evasive sometimes in our conversations. Uh, the best case scenario is that I'm just a worrywart, that nothing's the matter, and that we're gonna go forward with our lives and that it's just a hard, hard point that College has taken its toll on both of us. We need money. We're both putting the nose to the grindstone and we just need to get through it. I hope to find out for myself what's going on. I need some evidence to help me move on with my life. I'll always love Casey. I always have and always will. And whether she's making a mistake doesn't matter to me. I need to find out for myself so that I can move on with my life whether it is with her or without her. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Casey Becker, age 20, a student researching the effects of lying to her unsuspecting boyfriend. Investigation Day 3, Cheaters crews lay out a plan to get optimal results for the present inquiry. Positioning outside the home of Gabe's girlfriend, cheater surveillance teams remain alert after a vehicle approaches the residence and an unidentified gentleman makes his way to the front door. Waiting for signs of activity, cheaters PIs spot the unknown man leaving the house with suspect Casey Becker. The two get into suspect Becker's truck and are followed a short distance to a local eatery. Cheaters agents grow increasingly concerned as suspect Becker offers the unknown cowboy a lengthy kiss. Suspect Becker and her male companion find some time to make out on their way back to her vehicle. The unknown companion moves in for a little more affection from Suspect Becker before they return to her residence. After a quick goodnight kiss, Suspect Becker enters her house and the unknown companion speeds off. Investigation Day 4. Cheaters detectives remain holed up at Suspect Becker's residence, eager to unearth more evidence. Just after sunset, a familiar-looking vehicle comes to rest in front of the house. The same gentleman seen the previous day, who is now identified as West Cash, approaches Suspect Becker's front door. She exits her home seconds later, and Cheaters' mobile surveillance cameras shadow the couple's every move as they depart in Cash's truck. The pair arrives at a local bowling alley, where Suspect Becker and Companion Cash rush inside. Taking a lane, Companion Cash encourages Suspect Becker along as she throws a few gutter balls. Finally ending the fun, the two put up their shoes and exit the establishment. Suspect Becker happily gives in to Companion Cash's advances as they prepare to depart. After examining his wallet for some undetermined purpose, Companion Cash helps Suspect Becker into his vehicle and the two proceed several miles up the road to an upscale hotel. As if time were of the essence, Suspect Becker grabs Companion Cash by the hand and scurries into the hotel lobby. Several hours later, Cheaters investigators watch the gratified duo exit the building. Companion Cash requests a few more loving kisses before allowing Suspect Becker into his vehicle. Following close behind, Cheaters crews cautiously track the infatuated twosome back to Suspect Becker's home. After a lengthy goodbye, both parties go their separate ways. Investigation Day 7. Cheaters Central Operations sends word of Companion Cash's approach to field divisions stationed at Suspect Becker's residence. 
Moving into positions, Cheater's PIs observe Cash advancing up the dimly lit driveway. He enters Suspect Becker's home and all remains quiet for some time. Cheater's crews finally catch a glimpse of the two lovers walking to Companion Cash's truck. Cheater's investigators pursue the couple for several miles to a nearby restaurant. Suspect Becker apparently has no shame, as established in this recorded phone call with Gabe. Hello? Hey, baby, it's me. What are you doing? I just got back from eating out. Cool, what's up? Well, I've got some tickets to that comedy club you like, seeing if you wanted to come. Tonight? Yeah, what's going on? We're going out for my parents' anniversary. Oh, uh, really? To the restaurant you like? Yeah. <sighs> but it's been so long since we've seen each other. I know, but I'll make it up to you, I promise. Promise? All right, well, I guess I'll give you a call later. All right. All right, bye. Bye. Cheater's PIs wrap up the investigation and prepare a detailed report for Gabe. Coming up, the confrontation. Armed with evidence of Casey's disloyalty, Cheaters contacts Gabe to level with him about his girlfriend's involvement with another man. With his heart in his throat, Gabe comes forward hoping for a peaceful resolution. Gabe, thanks for being here tonight. Gabe, the reason that we're standing here tonight is because our detectives do have some information that they thought you should see. On this particular evening, a gentleman arrives at where she's staying. After a short time, he leaves with Casey. They get into her truck, and they're followed to an area where there's some amusement. You can see they're kissing. He's placing his hands quite liberally on her body. I can't believe this. After spending some time at this amusement area. They get back in her car. He drops her off. She goes inside the house. He takes his truck and leaves for the evening. On this day, Gabe, the same gentleman, picks her up. They're followed to a restaurant. And you could just see that, that the time that she's not spending with you and she's unavailable and preoccupied. Evidently, she is preoccupied. He drops her back off at her house, and then he again leaves for the evening. Now what? Now Gabe, I know this isn't what you wanted to find out, and I know this isn't easy. Where does Casey think you are this evening? I was some friends watching the game. Did she tell you what she was going to be doing this evening? She said she was staying home. Wasn't going to be doing anything. Okay. We do know where Casey is. And unfortunately, Gabe, she is not staying at home. She is again with this gentleman, Wes. We can offer you an opportunity to confront Casey face to face in the company of this gentleman. I have some things I'd like to say to her. I'm going to check with our detective right now. Yeah, we just finished up the second interview. Tell me what you have. They're having dinner at a restaurant not too far away. We do have a detective on site. We're going to load up right now. We'll start heading over there. Just keep me posted on any movement. All right, we're on our way. All right. You ready to go? Come with me. Yeah. Yeah, we're moving right now. We're they're still inside. People are starting to leave. I think the restaurant's starting to close, so it's not gonna be very long at all. Yeah, everyone be on their toes. The detectives have warned us to just be aware this gentleman does have a license to carry a concealed weapon. What am I looking for? Look for a flatbed, there it is. There they are. Okay, you stay right next to me, stay with me. Hi, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Are you Wes? Yes, sir. What the hell's going on? Who is this? This is Wes. Who is he? He's my boyfriend. Then what am I? You, you were 
were a summer fling. I don't know what you were, but a summer this, fling. This How are you gonna I say went? that after I left to come down here I'm to live with you? I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not. I promise. How I'm are you gonna say that after I came down here? It was your choice to move. You're but, the one that convinced me to. You wanted me to do it. You could have said no any time. When we first met, you could have said no. Coming up, the conclusion. You were on a break. I've been with him since I was 17. Why don't you tell me? I don't know what to tell you. What do you want me to say? Put it on the ground. Step back, security. Step back. I told you to back Step off, back didn't I? Did not. Did not. Did not. Did not. Right. Put it down, sir. Put it down. Put it down. Back off. Put it on the ground. Hey, sir, can you put that down? Put it down. Put it on the ground. Can y'all put, 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 put that out of my face? Can you put that down? That's a weapon. Please get a put it down. Hey, sir, that is a weapon. Can you put that down? Grab that. I want a truthful explanation. I don't. That's the truth. This is this is who I am with. Did you have any feelings for him? I I cared about him, but it doesn't compare to what I have. Like so you're saying okay. something better just came along. That's all that matters. I was with him before I was with you. I was with him before we met at camp. But now, over the last two semesters, you've continued a relationship with Gabe. I didn't know how to break it off. So I'm not the kind of person who just, you know. Did you know that she was continuing to see him? No, sure. OK, so Captain, she's probably lying to you, too. Because the trouble you've had breaking up with him, you've been lying to another person. You is know, that the is that the person that you are? No, that's not the person that I am. Okay. Obviously it is. No, it's not. Yeah, obviously that's... you don't know me very well. I'm obviously sorry. Obviously I don't know you. I would have told you if I could figure out a way how. Say, hey, I, I got another boyfriend. It. Don't come here. If you had all these suspicions, you could have called me. You could have asked me. I don't know. Oh, I'm sure you would have told me, like you told me where you were going. I people are involved. I think it's time With all the money, to... everybody can see, don't buddy. Don't touch me, boy. Casey, let me show you the footage that we have of your behavior with I this want gentleman. you to see what I see. I know what my behavior with, his, with him is. And, and that's something you're proud of. Come here. And you're happy that I saw it, too? I, you, you weren't meant to see it. If you were meant to see it, I'd do it in front of you. Now, what, what kind of guy about? are you going out with? Guys. Where are you going, buddy? Casey. Can you guys just get out of here? Do you see what you're doing? No. Come on, let's go. Unfortunately, Come on. we're not doing this, Casey. Come on. This is you what you've done. You are doing it. This is what you've done. This would have never happened if you guys did not got involved. Do you see what you did? Do you see what you did? I did Don't not try do to turn anything. the blame on me. I have to ask you, what do you do with those? Mexicans eat them. It's a delicacy. Okay. Unbelievable. Can you not understand that? No. I can't un understand tricking somebody into coming down here. I wasn't trying to trick you. Then why am I standing here? This was your choice. All this was your choice. Even without these people, why am I standing here with another man behind you? Because this is who I'm going to be with. This is who I've been with. I'm sorry. If she does it to me, she's going to do it to you. Well, that would be my problem. Let's get out of here. Stay here. Watch the truck, so... Following the confrontation, Gabe repairs his self-confidence and puts the past behind him. At the end of this presentation, Cheaters discloses his game plan for the future. But next, Cheaters welcomes Christina Lopez. Christina returns to discuss how her relationship crumbled under the scrutiny of Cheater surveillance. 
Christina Lopez, age 22. Christina describes the state of affairs that led to the night her future was irrevocably altered. When the vans first pulled up, I didn't really know what was going on. I just knew that all of a sudden, all these cameras were being shoved in my face and people were yelling at me. And then I saw Michael standing there and I knew, I knew what happened. No! Where'd she go? Please. What is going please. on? What is going on? Oh my God. We're, Get these cameras out of my face. I'm serious. What I'm is not this? joking. Wait, Michael, what the hell? Please, I'm stuck. I, see, I saw somebody hey, showed me on the. Hey, dude. Come on. Yeah. Guys, seriously, stop it. Stop it. Wait for me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When he slammed that poor cameraman, I freaked out. I was distracted and I had my own things going on, but I turned around and some guy gets slammed on the hood of a car. He just went crazy. I didn't really think he had it in him. Get out of my face. Please, baby, please. Just, you guys, get out of here. Please. Get out of my face, dude. this on me. Don't try to put this on me. Why do you have to get all these cameras? Okay. Oh. Are you all right? I tried calling Michael and he hasn't returned my calls. And I just, I love him. And if I could take this back, I would, but I can't. And I love him so much and I see now that all he wanted to do was take care of me. And I got scared, but now I know what I've lost. Gabe Teague can't believe that Ms. Becker lied to him about being single. Gabe plans to relocate in the coming weeks in the hopes of completely erasing Casey from his mind. Gabe states that he once questioned why such a beautiful girl would fall for him and confesses to still being in love with Ms. Becker, despite all the pain. Though Gabe admits that his feelings for Casey are still strong, he vows to be more cautious in the future. For her part, Casey Becker states that Gabe doesn't understand how women can be fickle when choosing a partner. She admits that her relationship with Mr. Cash is rocky at times and that she on occasion has second thoughts about remaining with him. But in the same breath, Ms. Becker professes a deep love for Mr. Cash and implies that Gabe was kept waiting in the wings in case her relationship with Cash soured. Ms. Becker closes by saying Gabe just needs to grow up and stop being so childish. Wes Cash scoffs at the notion that Casey had even the slightest interest in Gabe. Knowing Casey's attraction to domineering men, Mr. Cash assumes that Casey's relationship with Gabe consisted of emotional support and nothing more. Mr. Cash also expresses his belief that only a wimp would call cheaters for help. Over the truth, Monica turns to the experts at cheaters for assistance. Monica Tovar, age 20, a student who fears her girlfriend may be exploring romance beyond the boundary of their commitment. How long have you been in your relationship? I've been with her for about a little bit over a year. Um, we've been friends for about four years. How did this come about? Well, we would talk about, like, curiosity, you know, well, I wonder what, what it would be like to be with a girl, and she would felt the same way, and then we're like, well, we'd be too scared to approach another female, and then I think just one day it just happened. She doesn't call like she used to call. I mean, when I page her or when I call her on her phone, she doesn't return. She doesn't return my phone calls. Um, she tells me that she's going to a friend's house or to her cousin's house, and then she doesn't end up there. She's not that passionate and affection towards me, affectionate towards me at all. She's like lightened up. Is it a little frustrating when mm -hmm. she's around? It is, because I ask her what's wrong, nothing. You know, are you okay? Yeah. Is there something you want to talk about? No. Have you talked to her about this? Yeah, I brought it to her attention and she's like, no, it's just you're thinking you don't trust me and this and that and you need to understand I'm going to school and I'm working and this and that. I don't know, if she's cheating, I'm just going to, it'd be best for me just to leave her alone.
because if it was meant to be, then we would be together and she wouldn't be cheating on me. But you're going to sit here and go through all this pain. Yeah. I don't want to lose her. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Jennifer Alviso, age 20, a teller who is suspected of shortchanging the truth with counterfeit accounts of her true whereabouts. Investigation day one. Cheetah's detectives move into position and quickly film Alviso visiting an unidentified man at his place of employment. Monica's earlier suspicions are correct. The man is later determined to be Alviso's ex-boyfriend. To make matters worse, Alviso promises Monica earlier that morning to give Monica a ride from school around noon. During break time at the male companion's work, the two eat a quick lunch at a fast food restaurant. As the food is consumed, so is the duo with lust for each other's space. Hello? Hey, where were you? I had to stay at work. I said it's a 1.45 waiting for you, and I called you on your phone, and you didn't answer. How'd you get home? The bus. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I was trying to call you back. I was trying to call you back. Oh, you didn't answer? Oh, I didn't hear you. I was just trying to call you back. I was 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 trying to call you back. The lingering, passionate kiss clarifies that the hot trail is the path to Alviso's true character. Investigation day two. The case takes an unexpected turn when Cheater's detectives, expecting to catch Alviso with her ex-boyfriend again, instead uncover her picking up another woman at her apartment complex. The woman later identifies herself as Samantha. Inside the car, Alviso and companion Samantha cause the mercury to rise in what appears to be an attempt to exchange faces. From there, the couple run a few errands, including getting gas at a local service station. And while filling up the tank, the two hug as tight as a nut and a bolt could be screwed. Investigation day three. Like schoolgirls at recess, Alviso and companion Samantha spend this day shopping in a nearby mall, casually drifting through a toy store looking at baby dolls. Later, things turn a bit more adult as the two shop for lingerie together. Cheaters is unable to go behind their closed doors, so it's up to Monica to imagine what they do with their new nighttime clothing. Deeming it unnecessary to continue surveillance, Cheaters closes the case and delivers the facts to Monica. After the break, the confrontation. With Jennifer's disgraceful behavior clearly evidenced, Cheaters rushes to put an end to the deception being endured by Monica. In an attempt to contain her frustration, Monica takes a personal moment before viewing the surveillance. The reason why we pulled you out from your party tonight and wanted to get you down here, um, obviously I think you know, but the fact is your girlfriend has been cheating on you. And I'm going to show you some footage right here. On our first day of investigation, we followed her to a courier company in this industrial park. And here she is with this gentleman we later identified as her old boyfriend. They then got in her car and drove to have lunch that day. Now, you knew they were friends and they, they were keeping in touch. Yeah. But as you'll see in this footage, they're just sitting next to each other, but they start to get a little more contact. And now here they are outside his work, and he gives her a very lengthy kiss, not as just two friends would, would do. <coughs> now at this point, we figured we had enough documentation to call you and say, look, here's what we found. She's been with this guy and they're kissing, they're holding hands. 
I would call this cheating. She is not being honest with you about her relationship with her ex-boyfriend. But we decided we would pick up a few more days of footage. And it was even more shocking. This was the second day. We followed her over to this apartment building. We found her coming out with a girlfriend of hers, apparently. Some, She's some having girl. a, with a girl too? Do you recognize her? Yeah. Now normally you wouldn't think it would be a problem, but when they got in the car and shut the door, we have footage of them, them embracing and kissing. So obviously there's something going on here as well. Did you recognize her at all? Mm -mm. No, I've never seen her before. Again, here they are. They ran errands this day. They're embracing again. Here she is kissing this girl again. The third day of investigation, we caught up with her again with this same woman. Now here they are in, in a toy store. Do you know when this was? When that day? Two days ago, yeah. What did she tell you that she was doing? She was at her cousin's house. At her cousin's house. Here she is shopping, looking at lingerie here. And then they went to the, the dressing room together in the same dressing room and went in. And at that point, we decided we had enough documentation and enough footage to, to let you know and show you what was going on. And the fact that she has been lying to you. What did she tell you she was doing tonight? that she was going to be at home because she was tired and she had to go to school tomorrow and she had to work and because I invited her to come over to the house for the party but right. she didn't want to come. Said she couldn't come? Yeah. Do you know she where she is tonight? No I don't. I called her and she was at home and I spoke with her and I called her maybe 10 minutes later and she wasn't answering the phone so I didn't know. And, uh, She's not at home. She is at that apartment complex with this other woman tonight today, right now. And that's why we thought it was so important that you come over here and, and meet with us because we can go confront her right now and, and you can talk to her and ask her why she's lying to you. Okay, would you like to do that? Yeah. Do you want to talk to her? Yeah. Where are they parking? Parking over to the Ryers building. I think this is him. Is that them? Okay, wait, wait. I mean, wait with me. Come on, huh? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on. What are you doing? Coming up, the conclusion. My name's Tommy Grant from the TV show Cheaters, and we have surveillance what do you mean? footage of what do you. you... Mean fooling her? She's just your friend. What? What the hell's going on? Can you explain? Hey, you're in a and relationship. Michael, you've been back with Michael at Whataburger. We just went out for lunch. I seen you on video. You were kissing him all up on him. Can you explain yourself? Yeah, explain yourself, Jennifer. Hold on. She's in a relationship with her. Did you I know I gave that? you everything, everything. Everything you wanted, you had. I was true to you the whole time. Sorry. You ain't even worth it. Come on. Come on, baby. <laughs> Oh, 
talk to me, you're gonna get mad at me. If you wanna get in the car, get in, all right? I'll drop you off at the house and that's it. You're gonna see me again. She just, hey, I don't give a, f I all told right? you about. She said that was her friend. Yeah. And that her and Mike just went to lunch together. So obviously she's denying the whole situation. Do you think she was lying to the other girl as well? The other girl seemed so surprised by it. She must have been. She didn't know she didn't know what was going on at all. But I needed to know. Was that important for you? Yeah. After the confrontation, young Monica considers how she allowed herself to take this turn. At the end of the show, Cheaters discovers how Monica picks up the pieces of her life. But first, Cheaters welcomes Steve Hepner. Steve returns from the Dan Newberry case to shed light on his involvement in the tryst uncovered by Cheaters. Steve Hepner, age 31. Steve describes the near-death experience he received, courtesy of Cheater's client, Dan Newberry. Well, me and Josie were in the back seat making out, and uh, about that time, you know, I kind of heard something and didn't think anything of it. And uh, all of a sudden, I felt somebody slam into the back end of the car, looked up, and we were getting pushed into the lake. And uh, I knew straight away who it was, I mean, without a doubt. And. Uh, as fast as I could, I jumped out and, you know, at least tried to keep from drowning. I don't know if you can see through all these trees. I'm probably just gonna get out. You can just leave the truck right here and we'll just go on foot. No, I can't handle it. Right, there, right there. Dan, 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 get back in the car. Watch out, guys, watch out. Oh, go, go. All right, come on, guys, come on. Get over there! Come on, man, that's not why we're here. Do not put yourself in jeopardy. Let me get at her. No, calm down. After I got out of the car and, you know, made sure Josie was all right, um, you know, I kind of wanted to confront him, but I mean, I knew the situation. It was, you know, that was her husband, so, but, um, you know, all the cameras started running around us and, you know, probing us, I guess is the best way to put it. And, uh, I saw him push her or shove her or something, and I'm, you know, I've been taught better than that, so I wasn't going to put up with it. Gentlemen, stop, 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 Let him, let him go. Just let him the hell go, I don't care. Get him, guys, guys, guys. Here you go, well, I couldn't really say the guy was psycho. You know, he was hurt. Well, that's, you know, that's to say the least. I mean, you know, he'd been with her for three years. I don't know if I'd have gone as far as he had, but, you know, I'm not in his shoes. You have turned out to be one low life piece of. You being here with someone else isn't right. Okay. I know that what brought you here isn't right. If you weren't out in a, in a park 
in, in, in his dad's car with someone other than your husband, I wouldn't be here. And that's Let really him what drive it boils my car. down to, right? You are one sick individual. You know, it takes two to tango, and it was me and Josie, and, you know, Mike and I, I knew the relationship wasn't going to last, but, you know, you know, adult, you know, you make stupid decisions and you got to live with them, you know. I, like I said, I'm sorry, you know, I feel sorry for Dan because, you know, Lord knows I wouldn't want to be in that position. Monica Tovar and Jennifer Alviso continue to maintain a friendship. Both admit that the relationship is strained. Suspect Alviso states that she's sorry about her deceit, but holds resentment toward complainant Tovar for not being more forthright about her suspicions. Monica, meanwhile, struggles to regain trust in her former lover and wonders whether the shattered friendship can be salvaged. Companion Samantha says the complainant's actions surprise her and is currently trying to gather herself and decipher her feelings. At this time, she's undecided about her relationship with suspect Alviso and needs time to reconsider the schedule. Miguel contacts cheaters to investigate his concerns. Miguel Mendez, age 20, suspects his girlfriend is spending her lunch breaks with a male companion. Let me ask you why you contacted cheaters. Well, lately, it's been like, I'd pick her up from work, you know, pick her up from work and stuff. And sometimes I'd go and then I'd wait. And, you know, it's like it's past 12 or something, you know, I'm like, she's not here. I'm like, damn, so I, she tells me she gets rides, you know, from a friend. And I'm like, well, you know, from what friend, you know? I'm. I'm the one that picks you up, you know. You're waiting for me most of the time. Have you told her how you felt, that you have a problem with that? I, I've told her, you know, you know, if you do that, you know, just let me know if you, know, you don't want to spend time or if you're getting tired of me, you know, let me know something, you know. Right. So I can move on or whatever, you know, try to change something. And what does she say? She's like, no, it's, you know, it's cool. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to leave you. You know, she says, if I wanted to leave you, I would have already done it. You know, she says stuff like that. Do you think that she loves you? Yeah, I think she loves me. How does she show that? She's like, I don't know, she's like, she's like real affectionate, you know, she, she'll show it a lot, you know, be around me, hug me, stuff like that, you know. Does it feel different than any other relationship you've been in? Yeah, it's like, it's, I don't know, I can't explain, but. Is that why you need our help? Yeah, I want to know, like, if she's really out there, you know. When she says she's going to her friends or going home, you know, I want to know if she's she's out late at night or right. or what. Cause I mean, I'm I'm the one being at home, you know, looking for her, and it's like you, know, you it's feel like, like maybe you're being played a little bit. Yeah, like you know, if if I'm gonna, you know, if you're gonna do that, let me know so you know I have to be waiting for you. I could leave, you know. My friend, the one that she used to date, cause it was it was um. They were together for like a year and a half, and then that's when I met her. Oh, really? Yeah. So it was like, you know, we we're real cool with, you know, with each other, but I haven't talked to him lately. You know, I haven't seen him in a long time. How would you feel if you were betrayed by not only your girlfriend, but your old friend? Um, I wouldn't talk to him. I would just be like, you know, that's something, you know, tell me, let me know, you know. And if y'all would have told me, if y'all still had feelings for each other, you know, I could have, we would have still been cool, you know. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Crystal Raymond, age 18. A retail worker who is suspected of spending her lunch break with an ex-boyfriend. Investigation Day One. Shortly after surveillance begins, Cheater's detectives spot Ms. Raymond depart from her workplace during a lunch break. No foul appears to be committed until she gets into a white car with an unidentified man. The couple head over to a fast food restaurant for a quick lunch and conversation. 
Unfortunately, cheaters' detectives are unable to determine the nature of the words spoken between them. The two emerge from the restaurant holding hands. It is clear that some romantic interaction occurs. The male companion is later identified as Nick Chambers, Ms. Raymond's former boyfriend, and a personal friend of client Miguel Mendez. Ironically, it was Nick Chambers who introduced Miguel to Ms. Raymond. Investigation day two. Although the time of Ms. Raymond's lunch break varies according to her schedule, the pattern of events during it seems to be quite repetitious. Once again, Companion Chambers picks up Ms. Raymond and takes her to the same fast food facility. But on this day, the two former lovers take things a little further, kissing passionately in the car before Ms. Raymond returns to work. The concerns that Chambers should have had about his friendship with complainant Miguel Mendez are melted away by passion. Investigation Day 3. The patterns of Ms. Raymond and her companion are obvious and predictable. They once again go through the same lunchtime regimen. But afterwards, back in the parking lot, the temperature becomes hotter as Ms. Raymond engages in activities that are beyond the boundary for most people engaged in a committed relationship. Sensing something that's out of balance with his girlfriend, Miguel attempts to confront Ms. Raymond telephonically. What did you do today? I was going to go up there. You are? Yeah. I think I shouldn't have. Why? Why? Yeah. I don't know. I think you know why. There's probably somebody there to see you. Yeah. I left on my break. With who? Aaron. Cheaters has more than enough evidence to prove up the case and retrieves Miguel to present the unfortunate details. After the break, the confrontation. With Crystal's shocking disregard for commitment displayed in the surveillance, Cheaters tracks down Miguel to report the findings. Rushing to meet with Cheaters, Miguel braces for the unsettling news. Our detectives were able to uh, get some information for you uh, that, that you asked us for, and, and I'd like to go ahead and show that to you, if that's okay. All right. This is her leaving the mall, going to lunch. On this day of investigation, they went to a Wendy's restaurant. She went there with another gentleman. Is that the guy that introduced y'all together? Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Do you have a problem with them holding hands and going to lunch every day? Yes, yes. Does she tell you that she go, she's going to lunch with this guy? No, she just tells me she eats in the mall. She says, you know how they have the food court or whatever? Really? She says she's there with a friend that meets her up there or something. Really? Or one of her girlfriends or something. Here she is kissing him. He is the same guy. I understand it's... Uh, difficult to see them. She actually removes her clothes in this particular day. They took it further than we have ever seen, the two weeks of the investigation. It's very surprising, shocking footage. What's going on right in public, right in the middle of the parking lot. Um, there are cars going by people pulling up, and obviously they are having sex in the car. Yeah. Do you want to see any more? Is this enough no, for you? it's enough. It's all right. Yeah, it's very frustrating. And I'm sorry I have to show it to you that way. How do you, how do you think you want to deal with this relationship after you talk to her? I don't think there is no relationship. Not anymore. You've been betrayed? After what I just saw, no, no there's no relationship. Okay, I got him. There they are down right in front of Gomez. Which car are they in? The white 
right there on the left. Okay, keep going. There's a little white car on the other Green, side. Green, uh, laser coming out right there on your right hand side. I'm right behind you. Look to your left. See that white Camry? They're right behind that white Camry. There they are, right? Okay, 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 let's go. Get it. Everybody out. See, they're right there. Everybody out, everybody out, everybody out. All right. Hang on, buddy. Wait, wait, wait with me one second. Wait with me one second. Get the back door. Move, go. Okay, go. Go, 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 go. Let's go, buddy. All right, come on. Right over here. What the? Man, what? What? Man. Man. It's Tommy Grant from the TV What's Cheaters. Up, Punk. Dog, playing man, with. Dog. Dog, what? Man, you're a little. Would you like. Man, watch it. Man. Hold on, buddy. Come on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Would you like to explain what's been going on? Coming up, the conclusion. Miguel came to us. Uh, he, he thought there may be something going on. He cared about you. He thought you You want to explain what's going on? Ben, you know that? You want to explain why you've been lying to him? It's I've been going I'm... to lunch with Aaron. Who's Aaron? You know who Aaron is. Yeah, I know who Aaron is. Who is, who is this guy? That is my ex-boyfriend. Your ex-boyfriend? Do these people have to be here? Yeah. <laughs> um. He needed our help. He thought that you were deceiving him. Why have you been deceiving him? Why haven't you been honest with him? Because I don't know how. He cared about you. You don't know well, how to be honest? I didn't think so. I didn't think so. I thought you were doing the same thing to me. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did. No, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. If I knew, I wouldn't have done it. Do you care about it? Yeah. I mean, I do, but... <sighs> but you can have sex with somebody else? Is that what? You want to see the server that I had to show him? He cared you know about you. He came to us because he thought that uh, something may be going on. We've been watching you for two weeks. Oh my God. Okay, I got idea. I'm sorry. All that happens. Yeah, happens. Can't believe you. Can't believe you, man. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? He loved you. He had, he's gone through pain before and he thought you were different. And then you started drifting away. Well, he I said, thought he was doing the same thing to me that every other guy does to me. And so I was just doing it back. Oh, so you go back with the guy that did it to you the worst? Why didn't you ever talk to him about it? It don't even matter. You see what I had to show him? You see how wrong that is? <laughs> Happens, like you say. A lot happens. You feel ashamed? Yeah. You do? Did you care about him at least? <laughs> Man, I'm ready. I'm ready. You ripped his heart out. Nothing. You ripped his heart out. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. No way. Hang in here with me. He's gonna. He's all right. No, he's a. He's all right. 
Listen, you don't need that aggravation, man. You don't even need that. Okay? It's not even worth it. She acts like she cares, but nobody, nobody. She cares, that, but she just took off again. Nobody that cares would do that. All right? That's why I just said I'm ready. It don't even matter, man. I just want to. It's over. It. She knows that you know. And I don't know what those tears were, except tears that realizing that she's just an idiot. Following the confrontation, Miguel questions his intuition regarding relationships. Coming up, Cheaters unveils the condition of Miguel's heart. But now, Cheaters presents Wes Cash. Wes returns to share his perspective on the night he came face to face with his lover's boyfriend. Wes Cash, age 22. Wes details his involvement with Casey Becker and how coming between her and her lover changed his life. I think the fault for the whole situation lies on both parties. I think Casey should have been more upfront and clear with Gabe and I think Gabe probably shouldn't have hired investigators. He should have just came straight to her and talked to her about the situation. Hi, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Are you Wes? You yes, sir. What the hell's going on? Who is this? This is Wes. Who is he? He's my boyfriend. Then what am I? You, you were a summer fling. I don't know what you were, but... A summer this, fling? This How are you going to say that after I left? To come down here I'm to live with you. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not. I promise. How I'm are you going to say that after I came down here? It was your choice to move. You're the one that convinced me to. You wanted me to do it. You, you could have said no any time. When we first met, you could have said no. The camera guys, after I told them to back away, they still weren't backing away and leaving me alone. I had a cattle prod on the back of my truck that I decided to pull out to try to help convince them to leave me alone. It convinced my camera guy after getting shocked with it, but. Unfortunately, the bodyguards got their hands on it and took it from me. Told you to back off, didn't I? Didn't I? Don't call me. Back off. Put it on the ground. Hey, sir, can you put that down? Put it on the ground. Can you all put that down? Can you put that down? That's a weapon. Please, please. Can put it down? Hey, sir, that is a weapon. Can you put that down? Grab that. I was shocked and to realize that she hadn't canceled everything with him and I was really concerned that she might not be telling me the whole truth but I, th I think she should have gone on and confronted him long before the cameras ever got involved. Over the last two semesters, you've continued a relationship with Gabe. I didn't know how to break it off. So I'm not the kind of person who just, you know... Did you know that she was continuing to see him? No, sure. Okay, so Captain, she's probably lying to you too. After the whole ordeal was over with, me and Casey did go home and have a long conversation about what had happened and about our relationship. It really helped us farther along. We have decided to be more honest with each other and make sure that we know everything that's going on to where we won't ever have another surprise like this one come about. Miguel Mendez has decided to permanently break off his relationship with Crystal Raymond, with understandable reasoning. And on the grounds of disloyalty, he has also ended his friendship with his former running buddy, Nick Chambers. Ms. Raymond explains to cheaters that her actions are due in large part to the naivete of her youth. She now works two jobs to save money for a backpacking trip to Europe, where she hopes to find direction in her life. As for Chambers, he says he was simply doing what any man would naturally do if placed in a similar situation. Chambers maintains that he deceived no one and welcomes complainant Mendez's friendship again. Miguel is currently without love in his life. Ready to end any illusions, Tony contacts cheaters to clear up the quagmire. Tony Edwards, 24 years old. Tony suspects his girlfriend of two years is playing a duet with a music man. 
I mean, you know, before before we were going out, she was always she was one of those roadie girls, always going out for band guys, and you know, I thought she had changed and everything like that, but it just seems like she's snapping back into her ways, going out with her friends all the time. And just, I guess it just used to be a lot, a lot more open and a lot more of a relationship than it than it is now. It just seems like now it's it just doesn't seem like she's interested anymore. Really? And it kind of got to a point to where it looked like, you know, I was going to ask her to marry her. I was really strongly thinking about it. And, but now it just seems like the disinterest is, you know, you know, I fool myself too, just thinking that, oh, it's all right, you know, it'll pass. Yeah. And I hope it will. I hope it is just like a phase that it'll pass. But, uh, you know, every once in a while it gets to the point to where, you know, like, what the hell am I doing here? Yeah, I do love her. I love her a whole lot. And, you know, she tells me that she loves me. Even to this day, you know, she tells me that she loves me, but it's just, I don't know. You it's feel a little. In a tone that yeah. feels a little held back a little bit. It makes me feel two different ways. It makes me feel, it makes me feel good, and it makes me feel trusting that she does it, but at the same time, if there's something going on, yeah. it makes me feel like I'm, I'm getting played here. You know, I guess, I guess if I did find out she was, which I get, you know, I wouldn't be here if I didn't think sure. there was a chance that there, she was doing it. And I guess I would, you know, I'd be, I'd be pretty pissed off. You know, I'd have to, I'd have to just let her know, you know, why are you screwing this up? Yeah. Because we got a good, I think we got a good thing going. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Cindy Collins, 23 years old. Collins is suspected of trading time with her boyfriend, Tony, for the lead singer of a rock band for whom she books shows. Day one investigation. Cheaters detectives document Collins leaving her apartment complex, holding hands with a companion in question. Later identified as 25-year-old Dave Howell. Cheaters investigators tail the two to Landry's Seafood Restaurant in Dallas's West End, where they share kisses over catfish and cocktails. On this day, Collins' deception is made worse by the fact that she tells Tony exactly where she'll be, but not with whom she'll be. I have some bad news. Wow, well, what's going on? Um, tonight, can't really go out now. Why not? Well, because my mom just called and my uncle just flew in and they want us to all go out to eat, like just a family thing in the West End at Landry's. Cindy, this is the only night that I'm going to be able to go out. I know, I'm sorry. I just can't, I can't, I can't. I, I never get to see him because he's in town like once a year. Not really, but you know. I you just found this out this afternoon. Yeah, she just called and told me. On day four of the investigation, videotaped surveillance reveals her arrival at and subsequent departure from a local bar with companion Howell. The couple do not seem to mind sharing their private moments in public places. The two are documented kissing and fondling one another in the parking lot. Investigation day six. Cheater's detective score as Collins' purchase in a condom store provides proof positive of her infidelity. Collins has not seen Tony in nearly a week and at this time has no plans to do so. Cheater's investigators rule out the necessity of additional surveillance. After the break, the confrontation. With Cindy's deception clearly evidenced, Cheaters prepares to put an end to Tony's speculations. Faced with undeniable images, Tony must collect himself before he acts. How's uh, your relationship been going since last time we talked? Uh, how's the communication level been? Oh, it's pretty much the same. Really? Like it always is. I asked her out a couple of times. I asked her to go out this weekend. Remember I told you that we had plans? I wanted to go out this weekend, but right. that kind of fell through. Um, seems like she's going out of town to visit some friends. I guess I just kind of thought that if, uh, you know, the holiday and everything that we were going to be together. Excuse me one second. Hello? Hey, what's happening? We'll just do it. 
I have Tony here, so you guys, we're going to have to move and move pretty quick. Tony? I'm free all weekend now, man, so <laughs> I'm in your hands. We're, we're going to make a run up to Oklahoma. So we're going to be a little jaunt to Oklahoma City, did you? Yeah, but like I said before, I'm planning on going out of town this weekend, so I guess here it is. Yeah. All right. Come on over. She has been seeing someone else. As you imagine, uh, the facts are as he is in a band and he's playing here in Oklahoma City tonight. I have some surveillance footage on my laptop if you'd like to see. Here they are together again. It just gets better. Um, this is a little tougher. She, um, I don't know if y'all practice safe sex. We have him at a condom store called Condom Sense, I believe is, was the name of it. Actually purchasing some, I don't know how freaky you guys get, but as he was purchasing some some interesting items. We didn't catch it all, but uh, I know that there were some condoms purchased and, and a few other items. She was with her girlfriend here at that point. Uh, this was at one of his concerts. This is a fella here. And then we have them after the show. They got together here. And that was it. Like I said, I hate to uh, to show it to you that way, but uh, that's why you brought us in. Yep. They are here in Oklahoma City. Are we gonna get to see him? He's playing. The question yeah, is, do you want to see him? Yeah, I do. Do you want to confront them? Yeah, I do. On national television, now we have the whole hey, man, I'm not world here. I want her to be embarrassed. I want yeah. her to be humiliated. I mean, I can see it in your eyes. You definitely hurts. Y'all, we all were together how long? Uh, almost two years. Really? How does that make you feel? Half of me knew it all along. I mean, or I wouldn't have come to you guys in the first place, but, you know, half of me didn't, but I'm just, just going to let that first half take over tonight. Yeah. We're ready to go. We've got a call. Did he call? Yes. He's on, they're together? Yes, he has something. Okay. They are together. Are they close? Do we have a long way to go? Uh, it is about 10 minutes away. Oh, good. Okay. Let's go. All right. Let's get it done. You all right? Yeah. Yeah. I want to get it done. I want to do this thing. All right. Right here. Yeah. Hotel. It's management. We're from Cheaters hey, TV. We're going to ask you some questions. Hey, hey, hey. Get out! What's going on here? Hey, man. Hey, you hey, you know what? What? Hey. Hey, guys. Hey. Easy, easy. I'd like to ask you. I'd like to ask you. Get out of my face! Look. What the hell is going on? What the hell is going on? What are you doing up here? Did you know she was in a relationship with him? Did you know they were you know together for two years? Yeah. 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 Y
all the world, your family, everybody, your friends, is going to know what, what you what are. What do you think about the you. Uh -uh. you, Two timing you and him. Whoa. Okay, everybody. Hey, well, you know what, Cindy? Where's my keys to my car? Yeah, it's one thing. How does that make you feel? Where's You've my been, keys? She's been with him for two years. Yeah. How long have you guys been together? What's it even care? I mean, why should I even talk to any of y'all? Why? I mean, well, it's got to be a problem, obviously. She's why, been dating why? this guy, dating you two times. I'm not talking to you about here. Where are you going? Talk, we can go somewhere and talk. I'm not talking here. I'm not talking going? here. I'm not talking in front of these people here. You've been I think this is a good place to talk. I think we want to talk right here. No, what is this? Right I have nothing to say to you. I don't know who the hell any of you people are, and this is so crazy. Where, Where are you going, Cindy? I got the keys. Okay, well, give me the keys. No. -uh. Okay, I'm leaving. It's my car. Every I, <laughs> well, I know I'm going home. Come. Do you want do you want to work this out with any of Dave. these guys? Who are you with? Who do you, know who do you care about? Why, Cindy? Why? This is ridiculous. You guys just come huh? in here with all you these come all the way up here just to anything like that. Have we had problems? We haven't had that many problems. All right? Maybe just people. help him out and explain why. I don't know why, and I don't want to talk to you any of you guys. Is this a to you? I mean, y'all y'all had two years together. How long have you been dating, uh, what's, what's his name? Not that long, Dave. Not that long. So you were dating him now? Hey, you want to know about that too, then? If you want to talk... Uh, well, we'll well talk. I, I know about the toys that you bought him. I've got all that on videotape with you and Mary. That's <laughs> great. And how long have you been following me around? For a little while. Okay. Well, let's he go. really cared about you, and he was. And I care about him too, but I don't ever see him that much anymore. He's always working, and I. Have I ever lied to you? I not that I know. You know, in the past three or four days, I've recorded phone calls from each from you, and you know what? I've got three lies on tape from you. Number one, I'm going shopping with Mary. Well, that wasn't really a lie, but you were going shopping for sex toys, and they weren't for me. Number two, I'm going to West End with my family, and number three, I'm going to Oklahoma to visit my friend Amy. Do you care about Tony? Boyfriend's yeah, gone. I don't, Tony. I don't care. Why were you screwing around on him? Was it something? Is it is it him? Did he I do don't something? No, no, no. Okay. You know, all you have to do is come and talk to me about when something's wrong. Well, let's go talk. Let's go. Well, I'm leaving. So if you're coming with me, then well, let's go. I'm out of here. Tony, you want to I want to, I want to get back to Dallas so we can sort this thing out right. Would you Would you actually try to make it work with Tony? Yes, I'll try. I just have got to. Are you? Or is yeah, this guy? I'm gonna try. I've been with him for a long time. I might as well try. Okay, can we go now? Can do you have enough? Can everybody get on my face now? Let's go. Really, I hear you, Tony. Uh, yeah. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Come on, I'll take that off of you. You all right? Yeah. I just want to get out of here and get back to Dallas. I'm not going to be restrained up here. I can see you still care. I do care. I wouldn't have done this if I didn't care. Yeah. You guys, thank you very much. I'm going home now. Thank you. Well, Tony, be careful, buddy. I will. I'll talk to you. Are you all right? You okay with this? You have anything else you want to say? Nothing to say. Okay. Back that up, please. With the confrontation behind him, Tony comes to many important decisions. At the end of this program, Cheater shares Tony's final thoughts. But next, Cheaters presents Charles Nikolov. Charles shares his feelings on relationships and how his bond with Chloe Swain went astray. Charles Nikolov, age 35. Charles takes responsibility for initiating the actions taken by his former girlfriend, Chloe. I had no idea what was going on. Um, felt like the paparazzi was after me. I thought maybe they thought I was famous or something. And then I heard Chloe calling my name and my heart just almost stopped because I knew it was probably not something good that was about to happen. What do you think you're doing? What? 
is going on? Charles, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Can you explain to Chloe what, what you're doing with this young lady? I saw everything. How did, what do you mean you saw everything? Well, we know that every you time know you me. walk the dogs, you meet I, this young lady. Charles. I just ran into What, am I under him. arrest or something? Why would you have me you follow around? You are so lucky around? you're out. No. You're gonna cry for me to come back? Is this how you fix the relationship? Baby, come on. Huh? Baby, this is how on. you fix the relationship? You other girls? I don't know if you heard her saying she was gonna throw my stuff out on the street and kick me out. Well, that's exactly what she did. I tried to um, reconcile with her that night and found found most of my stuff, um, clothing, all my possessions out on the street. Um, I wish she wouldn't have done that, uh, but um, she did. And um, you know, things are a little tough for me right now, but. Uh, fortunately for me, um, Heidi's a very understanding girl, and um, I do think that, um, that I've turned a new leaf. Does she have a nice apartment you could go to? I hope so. Because you're not seeing these dogs again, and you're not coming home with I me again. Do you understand? I'm not the one that's crazy. Remember you thought I was crazy? I'm not the well, one that's you are, crazy. Obviously. No, I mean, I'm you're not. You're crazy right out here. No, I'm not What's crazy. Going on right now? What's going on right now? Is that I finally right now. am justified that you are the one that has been telling me I'm crazy and making me crazy by he making me umbrella. seem paranoid. You I'm not accusing, paranoid. You you're someone minutes. else. Chloe, I just want to tell you that um, we spent a lot of great time together and um, I still love you as a friend, and I hope that you find a great guy and you have a great life with him, because you definitely deserve it. And um, I realized that it was my it was my actions that made you act irrational, and I don't I don't blame you for that. I would have beat myself up, and um, so just. I just hope you you find love and that you um, and that you're doing good. After Tony Edwards confronted Collins, he ended his two-year relationship with her and immersed himself in his work with marketing and promotions. While Tony has not yet found a new relationship with which to share the future, he refuses to discuss the past and has no further comment regarding his ex. Currently, Collins remains in an exclusive relationship with Dave Howell. Despite the fact that Howell was also misled by Collins, he has both forgiven and forgotten Collins' reckless ways. Christina approaches cheaters to discover the cause of her fiance's hangups. Christina Ramirez, age 26, suspects the phone calls her fiance is fielding from unknown females may be indicative of the communication breakdown at home. I've been with this person um, for about a year and six months. I, asked, I was very serious with him. I actually asked him to marry me. Well, he acts like a father to them. He supports us and um, he, he, he acts just like their father. I mean. There's, there's nothing that he wouldn't do that their father hasn't done. You know, he's more of a father to them than their own fathers. He started getting phone calls from this hospital that he goes delivers in Fort Worth to. I called the number back and the girl said, you know, she didn't call for him. When we got into a big argument, we fought and he kind of shoved me out the door and you know I could hear him inside the house saying um, I just needed a friend Vanessa and he denies it to this day but I heard what I heard and he said what he said that day so I kind of had suspicions that he was messing around lately it's been like how can I say it it's like wham bam thank you ma'am and yeah. <laughs> just, just get it turn around and he turns his way and I turn it's not very cuddly anymore it's not you know he before it was passionate lay next to me and just, you know, hold me and now it's just like, he does it and that's it. All I want to know is that if he's messing around, he needs to just let me go and go on, you know, be a man and say, hey, I'm, you know, he says he, it's, we're going to go our separate ways, but yet he's still sleeping with me, he still calls me, he still, you know, fondles me, he, I mean, 
it's he's giving me, he's leading me on to something and he's saying something else. So I don't know what to expect or what to believe anymore. It makes me wonder even more and it makes me feel bad. You know, who else, yes, who else is, is getting this man's love that he's not giving it to me anymore? Just want to know the truth. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Cesar Moncada, age 24. The suspect is a rental store salesman who's attempting to scam his fiancee, Christina, into believing he has eyes only for her. Cheaters detectives get the goods on Mancata the minute covert cameras begin rolling. Day one of the investigation documents Mancata and an unknown companion purchasing a 12-pack of beer from a local convenience store. After shopping, the two decide to settle in at a rented room in a nearby motel, where they remain for several hours. Further video surveillance reveals not only the license plate of Mankata's companion, but her identity. Detectives discover she is a single mother of two, who, like Christina, believes she is the only woman in Mankata's life. While the companion is unaware of the fact that she's playing second to Mankata's fiance, Cheaters detectives are watching Mankata work both women and are ready to close in on him before the middle of the first week. After the break, the confrontation. With Caesar's despicable behavior exposed, Cheater summons Christina to unveil the candid surveillance. Christina leans on her close friends while she studies the footage. Hi. This is your girl. Yes, it is. I'm happy you came out to support her. Yeah. Your friends are all about, right? You guys are dead. These are my friends, and Caesar knows right here. He knows who they are very well. He knows that these are the girls that I run to when he leaves me. These are the girls that I ran to when he left me. These are the girls, too, when I ran to when I told him I wanted to marry him. I asked them for their opinion. Let, let me ask you. Girl, I'm, just, uh, oh, I'm just so, I don't know, Jordan. I don't know. I'm just nervous, man. Is there anything uh, that's happened over the past few weeks that y'all talked about? that has been, um, that's led to making you feel more comfortable in the relationship, that you've tried to make you more comfortable in the relationship. Yes, I've, um, I've dealt with things calling me now every day and telling me he loves me and he's going to make love to me and he's going to help me out and then one day he don't want to come here. I mean, he's still like, we're together. I have a conversation where he's like, you know, I'm sorry you come down, but you know, go on. But then the next day he tells me he don't Got That's Danny's bill. Oh, okay. Here he is getting in the car with her. It's the same girl. And, and this same girl. Well, actually, it was two girls involved. He had told you that he wasn't feeling good that night mm -hmm. and wasn't going out when, in fact, uh, he didn't truthfully go out. He went in, and I'm going to show you exactly where he went into. Uh, a motel. He picked up a couple 12 packs. 12 packs. Okay. He's trying to get up. He didn't feel all that sick, bottle. girl. They did go and spend uh, four hours in the motel uh, with two cases of beer, or two 12 packs of beer. Um, I'm sorry to have to show it to you this way. Uh, our job is to find out the proof, and, and that's what you wanted. And, and so now you can make a smart decision in whatever you want to do. Okay. Let me ask you, do you want to confront him and her together tonight? We do have evidence they are together tonight. And 
They are coming to a location that we believe we know exactly where they're going to be. What will you ask him? I just feel dumb. I feel real, real naive and dumb. And you know, I'm 26 Eve and dumb. And you know, I'm 26 years old. I don't need to play these games that he's playing with. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's get to the bottom of it and let's find out what do you think? Why is he lying to you? Okay, everybody. Not the music, because I'm going to pop her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I need some cushion because when I hit him, it's going to hurt my hand. I'm not even breaking my knuckle. Right. Hey, I've never been here before, girl. face. All right. Anyway, obviously, uh, we never know what's going to happen. Uh, we thought they were coming over here. They're en route somewhere. We're not quite sure where, you, where they're at. Our detectives are on them. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it here. Um, I know you were telling me something just a, just a little bit ago. And... Uh, you know, I'm here making myself look like a fool on national TV, you know, to see what I had to see, but you showed it to me. I don't need to go no further, you know what I mean? It's time for me to go on. And you know what? Being here tonight just made me realize that, you know what, no matter what happens, for me to just be strong and keep on going. Are you going, are you going to confront him tonight? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm going to go have a couple of drinks, and I'm going to go wait for her where the girl lives. I know where she is. I know who she is. You did the right thing, okay? You did the right thing. Put it there, put it there. I was gonna open the door. Y'all be very careful tonight, okay? She finna whoop some. Okay, girls. Yes, there you have it. It's uh, not all these end up exactly how we want them to, or exactly how they should turn out. Coming up, the conclusion. You okay? Yeah, I'm just nervous. I know. So Do you have any questions for us or anything? No, just want to get this over with now. Okay. Christina, is Cedar here? Yeah, come in. I don't think you would want me to come in. I just came to return some stuff. Oh, hold here. on. want to return it and you know I don't want to see you tomorrow. Hey, what's up, bro? What's up, dude? What's up? What's up? Look, hey, there's hey, your hey. cologne. Yo. You know, you know who the Caesar, TV you know? show cheaters. You want your cologne and, uh, back? There it is, Caesar. There it is. Today you come over and you me and think everything's okay. Now she knows what type of man you are. Now what Mindy and everybody said you Whatever. were a cheater. Oh, then why are you with me and you're here with her, living here with her? Cheating. Yeah, yeah, you do, Caesar. I need to get out of here, man. Yeah, you do know of what I'm talking about, Caesar. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah, you do. I need to get away, man. Yeah, you do. So why are you denying it, Caesar? You why are you were, denying you were it, Caesar? Her that, uh, why? <laughs> Go, Caesar. Let her know you're a cheater, Caesar. Now she can have your stupid ass. That's okay. You dumb today. I dumb you this was the last caesar i just wanted to come return your now she can have your cheating because i don't want you no more don't come visit me don't call me no more don't do nothing caesar nothing at all and i'm not lying she'll find out for herself that you're nothing but a lying 
cheat her. Tell her to talk to Mindy and Margaret. They'll tell her to stoop. Come over to my house today and say you don't know nothing. We can go this way. I swear it. Let's go. This is it. This is it. This is it. He's gone. <laughs> You know, and I know he went to the house today, and he's denying it. And How do you want to handle it? It's over. There's uh, this is it. He knows now that I'm not playing. He knows now. He now I'm. I can breathe now. I can breathe. Maybe he won't keep coming and. Knocking. Yeah, now he, he has no room to come come over i'm done already messed up his relationship here you know whatever he had now at least i can say that she knows that he's a cheater he's been lying and to you he's all been the time. lying he's he lied to her he's been cheating on her with me you know no telling who else he's been cheating with he's just now it's it's finally out now all the women know what type of man he is and i'm glad this is my way now this is my way i done got even with all the cheating and lies he's done this is it this is it well for you that's the important thing is that you got this off your chest and you straightened it out with him and uh and now you can go on and do what you need to do all right Following the confrontation, Christina's heartache gradually subsides. At the end of the show, Cheaters finds out if Christina's belief in marriage has been shaken. But now, Cheaters presents Carrie Clausen. Carrie returns to discuss how the actions taken by her fiance, Oscar, have benefited their relationship. Carrie Clausen, age 28. Carrie shares her thoughts on the ordeal she underwent on Cheaters when confronted by her fiance, Oscar. When I first saw the crew, um, I, I really nearly had a heart attack. I was, I was really mad at first, you know. It was like I really felt that we could have settled this on a different level. Like my privacy was completely invaded. Um, I felt bad for Linda too. I didn't want her to be drawn into this whole, you know, shenanigans that was going on. Even though she was a major part of why I was there. But um, I just felt that Oscar could have gone about it a different way. You know, it was extremely embarrassing standing there. Carrie, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Can you explain to Oscar what you're doing? I'm hanging out with my friend. Okay. You're hanging out with your friend? I saw the I saw the video. Don't your friend. What do you mean your friend? What are you friend? talking about? I, mean, I saw video. what happened on the video. Where are all these people? They've been watching you for days. Days. Yeah, yeah, oh, what? Yes, yeah, I saw it all. This was definitely my first experience with a woman uh, to that extent. I mean, obviously in high school you experiment a little bit, but nothing, nothing crazy. I think the average, and the average that any teenager does, you know. But this was definitely the furthest I went. I mean, I, I, and I don't really regret it. I wouldn't tell Oscar that, but. It was, you know, it opened my eyes a little bit. And also, you know, it helped in the long run. It made him appreciate me more, so. This is Whoa. so embarrassing. I can't believe you're doing this right now. Well, how do you think I feel? Okay, can we like walk Nothing away? Nothing happened. Huh? To like have this whole huh? No, why don't you walk why away? You, you walk, walk away. away. Why I don't know. Business. Why don't you my business is, I, I excuse me? My, my own business? I saw you, nasty. Uh, yeah, well, well, All right. Like, why can't you talk like a human being? You gotta bring this whole Because this is how I had to find out. Find this out is how what? I had to find, find out. out you stay away. You get away from me. I no, don't know I'm you. I don't want to know you. Your friends away from I don't want to know who the hell you are. What, where the, you're disgusting. Both of you. I can't do this right now. I can't believe you're doing this. I can't believe you're doing this. If I was placed in the same situation as I was, um, I don't think I would do it again. Um, I think our relationship has grown a lot more. Um, I'm, the communication level is a lot better. He's definitely paying more attention to me, and like we, we talk a lot more. It's great, you know. I think the way I went about it with Linda that was that was wrong, and I think it's much more important to keep these kind of things between two people. It's. Uh, all about communication. I met her, I met her, I saw, you know, we hung out a few times, I... 
things started happening. I mean, nothing, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing like that. But all know? these years, I've been at work. I meet models. I meet everybody. And what I haven't done anything, anything, not once, to betray you. And look at you. You're betraying me right nothing now. Nothing happened. I swear to God, I'm not. I am not gay. I'm not gay. Oh. I, I love you. Well, the video says different. Oscar and I today are fantastic. I'm like the happiest I've ever been. And I know he's, he's, he's just great. He's feeling great. He's taking more time off work, which enables us to see each other. He's relaxing, less stressed. We, you know, we basically make time for each other. So it sounds cheesy, but you know, we're really getting to know each other all over again. Um, we're very happy. It's great. For more information on these and other cases, log on to cheaters.com. Christina Ramirez is still in a relationship with Cesar Moncada. Not as his fiance, but now as the other woman. While Moncada has chosen to maintain relationships with both Christina and his companion, Christina has laid new ground rules. This time around, Christina believes that by being the other woman, she spares herself the risk of pain and anguish from a meaningful relationship, and no longer worries about Moncada's future philandering. It is unclear whether Mancada's companion knows that her role with T. Robert makes a vigilant call to cheaters. Robert Grisham, age 27, a youth minister concerned by his girlfriend's change of habits. I remember just uh, last winter being in my apartment and uh, we had a fire going and we were just uh, cuddled close together under a blanket and she was just telling me about how much she appreciated me being in her life and uh, how much she just, um, how much she loved me and our future together. One thing I have noticed is, it, it, I kind of feel like there's no more love in her voice when she talks to me now. I especially notice that on the phone. Um, she just seems, in a rush to get off the phone with me. I don't know, like she, like she doesn't have time for me anymore. I, I don't know, I can't, I can't put my finger on it. I don't know what it is. I need to know what's going on. I, uh, I need, uh, I need another set of eyes. Maybe another two or three sets of eyes. I don't... I've got to find out. Honey. I don't know. I don't know if I can even handle it, but I, I've... I've got to know. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Misha Oaks, age 28, a choreographer dancing around the truth. Investigation day five. Cheaters detectives waste no time initiating the current investigation and assign field crews to the residence Robert shares with the suspect. After several days of routine activity, Cheaters PIs spot suspect Misha Oaks leaving her home one afternoon. Making several stops along the way, suspect Oaks arrives at an apartment complex, then quickly disappears into one of the units. The situation becomes immediately apparent as Suspect Oaks emerges from the home wrapped in the affectionate embrace of an unknown gentleman. Traveling a few miles to a local eatery, Suspect Oaks dons her companion's jacket as he leads her inside where the two share a meal and some kissing. Satisfied, the couple ventures to a nearby movie house. As they wait for the show to begin, the unknown gentleman educates Suspect Oaks in the finer points of gaming. Hours later, suspect Oaks and loving companion commemorate their time together before departing back to the companion's residence. Calling it a day, suspect Oaks' male companion retrieves his coat before bidding his sweetheart farewell. Investigation Day 7. 
Hours after Robert has left for the day, Cheater's detectives perk up when suspect Oaks departs the apartment and heads straight to the same residence she visited two days earlier. Suspect Oaks parks her car. Her companion, who has now been identified as Topaz Williams, swaggers out to her SUV. Watching the two exchange friendly hellos from afar, Cheater's investigators tail suspect Oaks and companion Williams for several miles, determining the day's itinerary as the couple stops at a video rental store. Selecting a handful of movies, the cozy couple checks out, then heads over to a grocery store a few blocks away. Strolling the aisles, companion Williams assists suspect Oaks in picking out the necessary items for their afternoon alone. With their purchases in hand, companion Williams displays his familiarity with suspect Oaks as they enter her vehicle and return to his apartment. Suspect Oaks spends her few stolen hours remaining with companion Williams behind closed doors. Eventually, suspect Oaks is forced to leave for a dinner date with Robert. Investigation Day 10. All activities appear back to normal as suspect Oaks sees Robert off to work in the morning. But Cheater's surveillance teams are quickly reassured of suspect Oaks' intentions as she departs just 10 minutes later. She is soon back at Companion Williams' front door. He greets her and sweeps her off her feet. Suspect Oaks shows her contempt for Robert in this recorded phone conversation. Concluding the operation, Cheater's detectives prepare a summary for Robert. After the break, the confrontation. With Misha's infidelity well documented, Cheaters requests a meeting with Robert to disclose the outcome of the investigation. Unwavering in his pursuit for the truth, Robert prepares to review surveillance. Rob, thanks for being out here this afternoon. No problem. Thank you. I know that when you initially contacted us, you had some concerns about what was going on in your relationship. Our detectives have compiled some of the information that you've requested of us. Are you ready to take a look at some of that, Rob? Yes, definitely. On this day of the investigation, Rob, we had a detective that was outside Nisha's apartment. She was observed coming out of her apartment, gets into her truck, and drives to a residence. After entering, she is seen leaving shortly thereafter with the gentleman in tow. Oh. They're followed to a restaurant, and you can see him lean in and convert his. Uh, I know that's... That's not... I know that's unexpected. After lunch with this gentleman, they go to a theater. I don't know uh, from this in information if they did actually go to a show. But while they're waiting for some time, they're playing some arcades, taking some photos. These are things you do with people that you're involved in a relationship with. After the outing of the day, she drops him off. He leans in, gives her a kiss, and then she goes home. On this day of the investigation, she sends you off to work, goes inside after she feels confident that you've left, comes right back out, gets into her truck, and again goes to the residence of this gentleman. And you could see how she's carrying on. You could see for yourself how they're carrying on. They stop by a park, and you can see an embrace. It's relatively intimate carrying on. Where they go back to the residence of this gentleman, and there's a, no 
another kiss of grace. And Rob, that's not pleasant. I understand. Is this at least an answer to some of the questions that you've been struggling with in your mind? Yeah. I know what's going on now. We do know that as we stand here, Misha is again in the company of this gentleman. I'm gonna call the detective right now and find out what their exact location is. Yeah, we just finished up the client briefing. Could you tell me what we have? They're in a restaurant right around the corner. Okay, we have detectives inside and out. They've been there for a little while. Okay, we're wrapping up right now. We're head over. All right. Are you ready to go? Let's do this. Okay, let's load up. Come with me. This could be him now. Yeah. Go ahead and start moving. Okay. Okay, we're rolling. We're rolling right now. They left the restaurant? Okay. They're across the street, they're on the move, all right? She's got a tan track suit. You got a visual? Yep, I got you right now. Right there, stop, stop, there they are. Okay, Robert, come on this side, come out this side. Come. Misha, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Can you, can you stop for a second and give Robert a chance to ask you some questions? It's okay. Hey, it's all right. Don't, don't start getting on crumb, dog. What? Don't start getting on crumb, man. All what right? are you doing? What are you doing? That's now, what, what I'm trying to figure doing? out. What are you doing? I want some answers. What about this? What's this right here, man? What's going on? What's going on? While, while I'm at work, while I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, providing, you off with this okay. right here? Oh, my God. I, I, know, I ain't know that. I know okay. she had a boyfriend, but I, I ain't know. Oh, you I, knew. I, I, never knew. I never knew who he was. All I knew was like this. Um, I was having a good time with him. And uh, I don't know, man. I don't, he got kind of like got me scared right now because I don't know right. if he, he'll have a gun, a weapon, or none that. You don't know okay. that. Okay. You can't even get this dude to take you out of his own car? He ain't got a car, do you? He ain't even got a car. He's driving there with my car, right? So what do you want? What do you want me to do now? What am I supposed to say now? I don't you know, know. went through all this. Thinking, what do you want me to do? I don't know. I was thinking, you know, get your stuff out by five. I'm not leaving you. You're not. I'm not leaving you. And you're not leaving me. Coming up, the conclusion. You know, get your stuff out by five. I'm not leaving you. You're not. I'm not leaving you. And you're not leaving me. You were having problems in your relationship. But you're also helping cause problems in someone else's relationship. That's true. Is, is that? That's true. I mean, I don't got no excuse. Right? Like, I don't have no excuse whatsoever. I don't have none to wear. Even if I could have an excuse that could give me a million dollars, win a million mm -hmm. dollars, I don't have one for that, though. I'm in the wrong, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. But both well, how, of us in the wrong. Well, how long were you going to let it continue, though? I don't know. I mean, I was having a good time with her, but. As long as you were sense, having a good time? In a sense, I mean, in a sense, it was at times where I felt that her mind was leaning towards him, you know, the way she reacted and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it maybe it wasn't going to go a long time and stuff. I did see some traces that she really cared about this guy. We're going to be together. I don't know about that. Yes, we are. I don't know about that. Yes, we are. So there's nothing we can do about it but move on, all right? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm about to do. If he, if he, if he would, could I say something to him? I think at least you own an apology. This is too much. Let's hear, let's hear what I got to say. Let's hear what I got to say. I don't want, I don't want to get into you enough. I don't, I don't care, dude. I, listen, I don't care. I'm just trying to say one thing. I was in the wrong. I was. I admit I was in the wrong. But all along, man, you know, I had a feeling, man, that she still had feelings about you, man. I, and I sensed that for the way certain times she acted around me. And I ain't trying to do nothing, you know what I'm saying, to make you not care though. though. But I'm sorry. I was in the wrong. I'm being a man, though. You know what I'm saying? Other people just want to hear it and say it. This would have burned off. So I'll let you know right now, I don't want you to see me. We have any type of girls, any type of bitter feelings, man. I apologize. We don't accept it. I get enough about this, man. But I did apologize, man. I was man enough to do that. I said, I apologize. I was wrong. 
I think you need to have your stuff out of my apartment by five. I'm not leaving. Is there a reason that you chose to go in this direction, Misha? I mean, I just wanted to make sure that he was what I wanted. So I had to test myself. That, make, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. That doesn't make any sense. It does to me. None. It, was, it doesn't is. to me or anybody else. That's what that is, though. And, how, and how were you... How was that going to give you an answer as far as this relationship was concerned? Because the whole time I was with him, I couldn't stop thinking about him. Are you okay giving her a ride back because this other gentleman took off? All right. What was I doing that was making you unhappy? Or what wasn't I doing that was making you unhappy? Well, Rob, if she doesn't want to talk, you're not going to make her, especially in this environment. But you can still consider how you want to go forward. No one knows what the future holds. I think in the future, when you find someone who shares your commitment, and is the same way that you are. You'll know that. Undaunted by the turn of events, Robert focuses on both his work and his congregation. Later in the show, Cheaters discusses his present condition. But next, Cheaters welcomes Stacia Colvin. Stacia returns to describe the betrayal she suffered at the hands of her former lover. Stacia Colvin. Stacia discusses how discovering her lover's treachery allowed her to recognize the fragility of her emotions. There's no excuse for him doing what he did to me, especially with my best friend. So there's nothing that he really could have done. It would have helped if he would have been apologetic. It would have helped if he would have told me that it was nothing, but he told me he loved her. <laughs> I mean, both of y'all are, are up. You're up, darling, for real. <laughs> what the? F you what love her? Is that any way Tell to? Me. You love her? Our two kids. I've never had another boyfriend but him. I never was in a serious relationship with anyone except for him. So for him to hurt me like that, it took a, what three and a half years to really, really be able to trust another person before. And I really still don't, and I never probably will. Do you love this girl? Do you love her? Yeah. What about you? Your woman you've been with for... Oh, so you, you love me because I have your kids? Them. Why can't And you... why do you love her? Because she's such a... Right, what? I'd say a couple months after I got over it and realized what I was going through, realized I was taking care of him and my two kids and realized that he wasn't anything. He couldn't do anything for me, that he couldn't support us. So I'm very relieved now because I know that I'm better off in the situation that I'm in now. And then I could still be taking care of him and my two kids and all that. And it was just, it's better off now, definitely. Robert Grisham expresses his displeasure in the way things turned out with Misha, but confirms that a split is for the best. Robert acknowledges that the relationship had not grown to fit their changing needs, and he can now turn his emotional energy toward the helping of others through his work. Robert hopes Misha pursues positive new goals for herself as well, but he does not exclude any future involvement with the woman he still loves. Misha Oakes agrees with Robert that the two of them should separate. Misha confesses to not wanting to hurt Robert and says she tried very hard to make the relationship work. But she continues, the directions of their lives have drifted too far apart. Misha closes by stating, Robert was always there for me and I don't blame him for anything. Topaz Williams conveys his sympathies to Robert and is sorry for his pain. Though Mr. Williams believes he in no way contributed to the couple's difficulties. Mr. Williams proclaims genuine affection for Misha and his willingness to make her a happy woman. At the end of his wits, 
Damien petitions cheaters to undertake an unpleasant task. Damien Borchard, age 34, a snowboard instructor concerned that his girlfriend's recent evasive behavior may be evidence of betrayal. I, I'm not seeing her as much as I used to. Um, I don't feel as close to her as I used to. And, but at the same time, I send her money and I, I call her and I, you know, we still have this um, plan of moving in together that we're working for and I'm working for. And, but uh, I don't want to say I, I don't trust her, but she makes it difficult for me to believe her sometimes with some of the reasons she comes up with why we can't see each other. It just, they don't make sense sometimes, you know? I mean, I used to be, I'm the guy who'll, I'll drive in and see her for six hours and drive home happily. And now the, the, there's no time for that. She's always too busy with work or with something. And it's down to where I, I'm lucky if I see her three, three times a month. After, you know, trying to get in touch with her all day and finally getting a hold of her and, you know, having plans to come in the city uh, and then to have them changed for a flimsy excuse, I, I haven't lost my temper outright, but, you know, we've, we've gotten to the point where we, we, we have arguments now over the phone instead of seeing each other. And, and it's just, you know, I just want to know what's wrong. I want to know what's really going on. I mean, I, I've put so much into this relationship and uh, I, think I, I think I'd be physically ill if I found out that she was cheating. Just the, just the idea, honestly, makes me sick, you know? And that she couldn't be honest with me about it if, if she didn't want to see me anymore. I just, uh, I already, it already has affected me. I, I hardly sleep, you know? I, I just, I've never loved somebody as much as I love her, you know? If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Kate Swanson, age 27, a waitress suspected of hiding a secret lover from her longtime boyfriend. Investigation day two. In position at the suspect's residence, Cheaters field agents man their posts, anticipating probable action. Without warning, suspect Kate Swanson emerges from her apartment while talking on her cellular phone. With Cheaters agents following close behind, suspect Swanson takes an extended walk to an area near the city's waterways. With a swing in her step, suspect Swanson makes a beeline to a park bench where an unidentified gentleman awaits her arrival. The two apparently are more than just acquaintances. The unknown fellow plants a big kiss on suspect Swanson. Cheater's operatives move forward, spotting suspect Swanson and her companion hand in hand advancing to the subway where they take a trip to a nearby park. After a short stroll, the two stop on a bridge and share a few kisses before carrying on with their nature walk. Moments later, suspect Swanson leads her companion to a secluded spot where the two enjoy a little more private time together. Temporarily satisfied, the lovebirds finally leave the park and head to an exclusive department store back in the city. A while later, suspect Swanson and company leave the store and walk to a nearby subway station. Not wanting the good times to end, suspect Swanson grabs a few more kisses before bidding her companion farewell. Investigation Day 3. While in pursuit of suspect Swanson, Cheater's detectives remain cautious at all times to avoid any unwelcome attention. After exiting the subway, suspect Swanson takes a short walk to a nearby cafe. Upon arrival, suspect Swanson greets her companion, now positively identified as Eric Randall. Companion Randall surprises his lunch date with a forceful kiss after the two sit down for a hot meal. Blushing from all the attention, suspect Swanson settles in for some casual conversation. After lunch, the two walk several blocks to a popular music store. Without making a purchase, suspect Swanson and companion Randall advance across the street to a head shop. 
Several minutes later, the giggling couple emerges from the store with an unidentified item. After packing it away, companion Randall slaps suspect Swanson on the fanny on their way to a nearby bar. When the drinks arrive, the two share a toast, followed by a lengthy smooch. A long while later, suspect Swanson and companion Randall leave the bar and head for his residence. The duo disappears inside for a couple of hours before suspect Swanson decides to head back home. Investigation Day 5. Cheater's agents initially lose sight of suspect Swanson, but catch up with her as she walks through the busy streets. Much the prankster, suspect Swanson taps her new boyfriend on the shoulder and moves to the side before planting a big one on her unsuspecting companion. Ready for an eventful evening, the couple advances to a local bar to get the party underway. Just as they sit, suspect Swanson's camouflage-clad companion gets up to illustrate the proper way to treat a lady. Meanwhile, suspect Swanson demonstrates her inability to be forthright in this recorded phone call with Damien. With sufficient evidence in hand, Cheater's detectives close the case and make all necessary preparations for Damien. Coming up, the confrontation. With verification of Kate's deception, Cheaters meets with Damien to discuss the essentials. Anxious to hear the final outcome, Damien puts his trust in Cheaters. Thanks for coming down as quickly. I know it's difficult, short notice, but we appreciate your attention. The reason that we did have you come down when we did, Damien, our detectives do have some information that you've asked us to compile. There's a potential that this may be disturbing and upsetting. Are you ready to take a look at some of this? Yeah. Okay. As the investigation starts, Damien, a detective observed Kate leaving her apartment. She's followed to a point where she meets an unknown gentleman. As you can see there, they share an embrace. From that point, they're followed on the train where they exit at a park. And as they get to this point on the bridge, you can see that they share a kiss there. And I know I know that's not what you'd hope for. Not no. What you want to see. Not at all. They continue on from there, Damien. Stop and get some coffee. And at that point, she gets on a train and he gets in a cab. On this day, Damien, Kate meets this gentleman yet again. They stop for a drink. From there, they go back to his apartment again, Damien. And up until the time that the detective called it quits, she was still in. And we assume that she just spent the evening there. Well, I guess you did your job for me. <laughs> well, you know, and I know that this isn't pleasant, and I know it's what you asked us to do, but again, it's not something that, that I really enjoy. Where does Kate think you are right now? She thinks I'm up, I'm home, that I'm home, I'm, I'm upstate, you know? We know where Kate is, and she's not working. And she's now? not out with the girls. She's with this gentleman again. And what we can provide you is an opportunity to confront Kate face to face. That would be great. I'm gonna call the detective right now. Yeah, we just finished a client briefing. Tell me what you got. They're at a restaurant and bar that's just right down on the corner. 
They spent the whole afternoon together, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's, no, he's doing okay, but, you know, I think he's uh, anxious to get this part over with. Okay. Yeah, we'll just sit tight and wait and wait for your next contact. Okay. They're in the restaurant. It's just down the street. We have a detective that's inside. We've got another one that's outside, so we're, we have exits covered. Someone will come over and brief us, and then we'll figure out the best way to go forward from there. All right, gonna be okay. Yeah. All right, guys, get ready. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's go. They're at the front door. Guys, watch your step getting out in the street. She's got on a white, she's got a white jacket on. You see her? Right in front, they're right in front. Okay, guys, let's go. Watch your step. Stay with me, Damien. What's up, Kate? Kate? What's up? What are you doing? Oh hey, oh dude. Oh hey, Kate, back off, dude. I want to talk to this girl. Dude. What's up, dude? What's up? Hey, 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 This guy. I'm sorry, I was gonna tell you, I'm sorry. Coming up, the conclusion. Hey, what's I'm up? sorry! What's going on with this guy? I'm sorry, I was gonna tell you, I'm sorry. You're gonna tell me when? I'm when were you gonna tell me? Tell who what? Why'd you tell I us all? When were you gonna tell me, honey? Um, huh? I call yes. you back in. Hey. Guys, I, I calm down. She's been dating him for um, the way. Take it easy, buddy. Hey, please. Please. Stop, right. 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 Stop, Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. It's okay. Stop it. Please. I'm not kidding. Stop it. Just go away, dude. Just go away. All right. You go, go away. Go away. You don't even look like you're into chicks, man. You need to pack hey, off, bro. Gentlemen. You need to pack off, Stop bro. It. I just want to talk to you. Can I talk to you? Can I, can with our tough stop guy here. Is that possible? Big tough guy. Second? I'm leaving, Kate. You got a couple minutes. Yeah. What's up? I'm sorry. You couldn't just tell me. You can't just tell me. I was gonna it was tell that you. Hard? I was going to tell you. It was you. that hard? Yes, it was that hard. Why? Because Every week when I call you, oh, you got something to do. All you had to do is say, hey, Damien, I'm over it. I'm over you. I've been sending you money, honey. I'll give it back. I'm trying to get it back. I thought you wanted to live with me. I did. You I, did, but now you don't? I don't know anymore! Yeah, yeah, I don't well, understand! What, I don't understand what? What are you, crazy or something? Where all of a sudden you're insane? I'm confused! <sighs> confused about what? Cool. You either want him or you want me. It was that, it's that simple, you know? Let me talk to big tough guy for a second. Hey, tough guy! Please make them stop! Big tough guy, keep him. He's all yours. Tough guy's all yours. I didn't even want to do that. I didn't want to do that, Joey. Okay, that's all right. I didn't want to get that's in all okay. that. Uh, you know what? Come on. Let's get you out of here. I just feel duped, man. You know? I feel duped. She it's broke right. my heart. I trust her. I totally trust her. After the confrontation, Damien accepts the truth and prepares to carry on with his life. Stay tuned as Cheaters announces his future endeavors. But now, please meet Denver Vincent, 
the gentleman caught carousing with an involved employee during office hours. Denver Venson, age 32. Denver provides fodder for the age-old debate of avoiding romantic relationships with co-workers. Well, when I first seen the camera crews coming to the store, my first initial response was to get these guys out of my store. I thought, you know, maybe my customer was probably a little spooked by this, so, you know, I had to get these guys out of my store, so me being in charge, I had to leave them out of my store, and that's what I did. I took them out to the street, and that's where everything blew up. <laughs> Excuse me, Cherry? Yes. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. It's your new boyfriend back there. What's up, dude? Just come holler at me, man. We understand that. Just come holler at me, man. Are you Denver? It's not gonna get out of hand. What's up, man? Huh? Get the camera out my face, dog. That's the chain you bought him with my money the other day? Y'all need to get these cameras out of my store. I knew she was with somebody, but the way she explained to me was that he was cheating on her, he would stay out late, he wouldn't come home, or maybe he was going to help a depressed friend, quote unquote. And I just felt at that point that, you know, he was no good for her. Oh, she get a bonus? Yeah, she getting a yearly bonus. Okay. Why don't she get Y'all need to leave the store. Okay, all right. Why don't we have to do you, walk do up you know on the man. You knew that she was in a relationship with Walk up with on him. me, dude. Yeah, I knew. Okay. You got, so you you got, me you got my money story. around your uh, neck, chump. You're not taking care of her, right? You got my money around your neck. Okay. Tell, tell your boss to come outside. Derek, if you're watching out there, man, I apologize for what I did with your girl, but I don't apologize for the confrontation we had, bro. I'm still here whenever you're ready. Damien has yet to fully recover from the actions of his former girlfriend, Kate. He admits it may take time to rid himself of her memory. However, discovering the deception allows for his healing to begin. Damien states who knows how long she might have kept up the charade. Damien now looks forward to immersing himself in professional ambitions, but does not rule out the possibility of romance in his future. Kate Swanson denies any wrongdoing and professes only admiration for Damien. She says his refusal to move to the city fractured their delicate relationship, and she had no other choice but to date other men. Miss Swanson admits that she misses terribly Damien's generosity and affection. Despite the breakup, Miss Swanson says she wishes the best for Damien, although she realizes that any hopes of reconciliation are pointless. Eric Randall would not speak to Cheaters producers about the affair, his knowledge of Miss Swanson's relationship to Damien, or his feelings toward her. Mr. Randall categorically refused